Okay, good. Hello, everybody. At 6.02, I am in council chambers, and it looks like a full house at the stadium tonight. Councillors Barmere, Cunliffe, Abich, CAO DeJong, CFO Rook, Municipal Coordinator Duarte, and myself. Time now is 6.02, and I'm going to um, uh, start the agenda, so we will go to the closed agenda and the proposed topics for discussion in the absence of the public are committee appointments, disposition of land, disposition of land or improvements, and a new ad, legal advice. And the sections under the act that will be going under are section 90, subsection 1, A, E, J, N, and add I as well. Council does not anticipate reconvening the open meeting for any process other than to adjourn the meeting generally and report out if applicable. Councillors, could you confirm by saying yes for the reasons and what will we be, why we will be going into in camera? Those opposed, no. Yes. Good, Good. carried. And we will say goodbye to the public. And 03. Good evening, everybody. It's 703. I'm in chambers with uh, Councillors Barmayor, Kunla Abich, Councillor Baines online. And we have the CAO, the CFO, and the municipal coordinator with us. I'm calling the meeting to order, and uh, the first thing we will do is report out from our concluded um, in-camera session. And I'm happy to say that there are two new members uh, for the uh, Lions Bay's Climate Action Committee, and they are John Westcott and Norman Bergtowski. Uh, and we thank them for their service in advance of them joining in. And the next two appointments are the Board of Variants, and I'm pleased to announce the appointment of Scott Gordon and David Lee. And I will also report out that Council will hold a special meeting on January the 11th, 2022 at 6 p.m. for the purposes of consideration of an encroachment agreement and development, uh, sorry, DBP, from the owners of 52 Brunswick Beach Road. And that concludes reporting out and we'll go to our regular public session now and we will begin with public participation actually sorry adoption of the agenda i'll put that forward any changes i think we have one which would be the uh resolutions of um municipal coordinator that'll be item c and that's for this um climate action committee to expand the membership so if you can prepare that so we get there uh, any other changes, amendments, councillors, other ones? There being none, um, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, please confirm by saying yes, suppose no. Thank you very much. Carried uh, public participation. There's many people in the gallery. If you'd like to come forward, uh, you can, uh, don't have to turn your camera on, but if you'd like to unmute, uh, we'd welcome you now. You've got two minutes on a topic uh, that is on this agenda. There appears to be none, so we'll move on. Just, are we, are we still gonna do the rearrangement of the order? Yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, public delegation, Mr. Doherty, I think I see you're here. Uh, and um, why don't you do your, uh, uh, your delegation piece first, and then if you'll allow me to take over, uh, I, you've got a, a recommended resolution for you. Uh, oh, thanks, Mayor and Council. H how's my audio? You're perfect. Okay, uh, thank you. It's it's uh, quiet on my end. Um, thanks very much for hearing me. I appreciate I've got a couple of minutes. Uh, I've previously brought an application for an exemption to the noise bylaw um, for, for playing live music externally uh, at the, the store and cafe over the summer period. Um, you know, it's it's not a secret um, that it's been a challenge to get through not just COVID, but now COVID and uh, coupled with November, which is our quietest month of the year. In fact, the winter is. I've finally been able to find a, a wonderful new manager um, who, who, um, who wants to start to do some interesting things just to bring more people into the store. If the store can't survive, then it needs to close. If it closes, then by necessity, um, the, the Canada Post closes in the store. All of those last minute essentials close in the store. 
we're bringing a, a noise bylaw uh, exemption to allow um, music internally, amplified music um, within the store and cafe. The reason I brought this application is we brought it, we, we had a sound check for some jazz music, a single jazz musician over a small amplifier. She did a sound check on Wednesday, uh, December the 1st, and it immediately prompted a noise complaint from other residents in our little strata. Um, I forwarded to council and mayor, I hope that you've had an opportunity to see the video and audio I took of what we're proposing to play. Um, my business has attempted to work in with, uh, with some of our neighbours upstairs. There is no attempt at collaboration or cooperation from them. It's all or nothing. Uh, initially, during the sound check, we had the jazz, the jazz singer, a solo jazz singer, not accompanied by any uh, uh, you know, instruments at all, um, singing beneath and admittedly beneath um, apartment number two, where the noise complaint came from. We closed the vents and we moved the jazz singer up to the northern end of the building, uh, ironically um, beneath uh, the apartment where I live. Now, um, the, the complaints that we hear from within our strata, oh, it's a 40 year old building. It's not designed for live music. Um, the people that bought into the building, whether it's me, other owners, they bought next to a highway and they bought above a cafe, which at the time they bought in was licensed to serve alcohol. I have no idea before my time, whether it actually, um, uh, there was live music played or music at all. But that doesn't mean that times can't change and they should change. So I'm asking for an exemption. Um, uh, I think quite a nuanced exemption um, over the winter months uh, on Fridays and Saturdays, uh, at just an ability, it won't happen every Friday or Saturday, to have entertainment like this within the store to bring more people in so the business can continue to exist. I'm open to questions. Councillors, any questions? Councillor Abbott? Um, yeah, Craig, I, I, I just have one. Um, I hear what you're saying and I don't necessarily need or care to get involved in the discussions between yourself and the residents, but I, I do think there needs to be some mechanism whereby they are informed um, and they have some means to you know, plan their lives. If one of them had some need for I had some family occasion, um, get a, a bereavement or whatever, I don't know, um, they don't get surprised and they're able to. So how do you, given they're always gonna say no, but do you still have the means to be able to inform them and at least hear their objection if there's something of more substance to it than I than know every time. Oh, Neville, I think that's a fair comment. And I think that's, uh, that's um, it's a question you asked prior to the summer exemption being granted. Um, I, I'm looking to be collaborative. I'm looking to be cooperative. It's, but but, I, but what, I, what I do think is unfair is this all or nothing approach. Um, I'm more than happy to give advance warning and to and 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 to in a in a good faith way, if somebody says, you know, we're hosting a wake in our apartment upstairs, or we've got a special occasion, we don't want to hear music from downstairs. Obviously, I would take that into account. Um, we, we are not the most harmonious strata on the planet. There's a number of them around across the world, but um, this is the first time I've lived in a strata and experienced it firsthand. And it's a mixed use strata residents upstairs, commercial downstairs. There's a reason for the last 20 years that most stratas have separate stratas, a residential and a, and a, and a commercial, because they have different and competing interests. But it, for me, um, I think the best answer I can give is that if someone has a legitimate, genuine, bona fide, just not this over my dead body, um, uh, reason for not having you know jazz music um, and, and a solo jazz performer, um, perform, then I'd be open to, to, to making sure that we just put it off to another night. We're not talking every Friday or Saturday. We're talking maybe once every second week or whatever. But I do want to give my manager a bit of scope. He does come from an entertainment industry background and he wants to put a bit of vibrance into our little place. Um, it's, it won't be, and I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily being tongue in cheek here, but maybe I am. We're not talking about Granville Street on a Saturday night with Metallica belting it out. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Doherty. Uh, Councillors, come on, Mayor, any questions? 
No questions. No. Nope. Councilor Bain, any questions? Uh, I think that will kind of hit the nail on the head for me. Um, and I, I would just, uh, I don't want to be discouraging or anything, but uh, I think your willingness for some form of uh, compromise would go a long way, I think, for the community. And um, I think reasonable people can come to reasonable conclusions and maybe I should leave it at that. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Dory, if you'll give me some leeway, I've made a friendly amendment uh, to what I understand is a recommendation. And, yes. and that is to include holidays and Fridays in your request as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, so the, uh, I'm, on your behalf, I'll put forward this recommendation. The council grant an exemption to noise byline number 283-1998 to allow for live amplified music at the general store and cafe on holidays, Fridays, and weekends from December 15th, 21 to Jan June 30th, 22, 22, between the hours of 12 p.m. and 9 p.m. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, seconded. Any discussion, councillors? Just one, one less thought, COVID protocols, obviously, you just Please make, just make sure we keep that in mind. We don't know where this next one's going, but go. certainly a lot more transmissible. There you go. So I think, Mr. Doherty, uh, you're running your enterprise, but uh, Councillor Roberts brought two points uh, about notification and the other one about protocol. And we'll expect you to continue to be the good corporate citizen you are. Take it on board. Thanks, Mayor and Council. Not just yet. It hasn't been approved. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Bain, any last minute questions? Oh. Hi there. Um, my name. Hi there. My name's Emma Shaw, and I'm hoping to have a couple of minutes to speak. I live in Unit Two. Thank you very much. Just a second, uh, uh, Mrs. Shaw. All right, we'll hold uh, the discussion. I apologize. I didn't uh, see you, Mrs. Shaw, or recognize you. So hold the hold the uh, hold the re recommendation and at this discussion piece, and we'll go to you, uh, Emma. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, Council. Unfortunately, I personally, nor my spouse, we were not able to attend our Strata Council meeting yesterday. Unfortunately, we had to put our senior dog down yesterday morning. Um, so today I've just tried to write a statement to just <laughs> speak that. So we live in Unit 2. It's directly above the general store and cafe owned by Broughton and Broughton. And we've had various challenges with noise, as I'm sure you're aware and may remember from years ago um, since we bought our unit and moved in. Um, which is coming on four years ago. And we do have a wood frame building. It is nearly 50 years old and there has been zero, I mean, zero soundproofing between unit two and the store below. It is dead space. Um, we knew that when we moved in, but we did not purchase above a live music venue, whether liquor, um, was approved or not, and it was already at the time, um, actually for liquor board approval, if you would like to uh, sell liquor in, a, in an establishment, um, open liquor that is, in a bar-like setting, you do need soundproofing, that is recommended. Um, which we'll be following up on that, of course. Um, but we, you know, we deal, we're bombarded with noise daily from the sound of the door opening and closing all day to conversations to the barista tapping out coffee grounds to large delivery trucks coming and throwing going throughout the day and the week. We deal with a lot of persistent noise from below and we knew that when we moved in and we accept there absolutely will be noise. Um, but when this building was built, it was not built for a venue to have live performances, especially amplified performances. That is the key message that I have said before and I'll say it again. Uh, it was built as a corner store in a cafe that sells soup and sandwiches. Times are changing, yes. Uh, we struggled with the amplified music that occurred on December 1st when a singer was practicing for her upcoming performance. Um, for December 3rd, it was amplified. There wasn't a band, but it was a singer who was amplified. It was a live performance in our living room. Um, to say the least, the noise was intrusive uh, to our unit and it was a nuisance. Um, at the end of the day, the last thing you wanna do is, I'm a nurse, I listen to bells and whistles all day long. I, unfortunately, I really can't take hearing more bombarding noise aside from my two-year-olds. Um, 
So Broughton and Broughton, when they purchased the space, they were aware of the state of their unit that they purchased and they opted to not do renovations for soundproofing. They absolutely have done other soundproof or other uh, renovations down there, but not soundproofing. Um, frankly, the continual conflict that occurs um, from these events, they are extremely stressful and they absolutely are affecting my mental health, um, let alone the overall disturbance that is caused to our young family, our two-year-old I mentioned, and it is greatly, greatly impacting our mental health and our quality of life. These special events appear to main, mainly consist of a small crowd, very small crowd. Uh, it would be genuinely appalling to see council support such large disruptions for residents of our building, um, especially while there are absolutely no major benefits to our community. This is serving a very small portion of drinkers in our community. Um, and it's not even really benefiting greatly the store and cafe. I can't see how it could with such a small gathering. But long before COVID, Broughton and Broughton has been planning to move forward with these indoor events. I've been, I have many different handouts, flyers they've put out over the years. Um, and we have had zero notification of any events, zero in the past. So we purchased an affordable home in a multifamily dwelling to be a part of this amazing community. We love this community. We attend the family events. We meet members of the community on trails, on the road. People wave to us. Um, we have conversations with you. I'm sure I've seen any dog walker out there. Um, but Mayor McLaughlin, in your message to in the Village Update on November 19th, you discussed housing in in the community and spoke of affordability for young families and seniors. This is council's opportunity to show your support for us young families who would like to afford to live in this community in one of the only multifamily housing units we have and seniors and you know our right to enjoyment enjoy our home and our proper property it is equally as important as those in single family dwellings and that seems to be missed here. The village bylaw states no person shall make cause or per permit to be made within the village a continuous sound with a sound level that measured at a point of reception exceeds 55 decibels in the daytime or 45 decibels in the nighttime. This music will absolutely be above those decibels. Thank you very much, Mrs. Shaw. And Thank uh, you. And thank you so much for allowing me to speak and letting me know of this meeting. Uh, I am truly grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution for the health of all of us. And I'm sorry about uh, your pet passing away. Uh, they've got the right last name too. Uh, councillors, any questions for uh, Mrs. Shaw? Um, yeah, I, I have a question for Mrs. Shaw. Um, you heard me earlier uh, asked Mr. Doherty um, that he would give you guys notice when he was going to have these events. He said yes, and you saying no. You say you never receive any notice? I have never received notice. There, I, pardon me, I believe there was one time that was because he told you guys that he would tell us. So he went ahead and put forward a bunch of dates to us for some summer events. Um, that was two summers ago. But otherwise, I have never received any notification from my strata or Broughton and Broughton. Okay, thank you very much. Um, other councillors, any questions? Seems to be a disconnect on the notification piece. Anybody want to make a modification to the motion on that? I'd like to make a notification that's conditional on residents receiving due notice um, and being able to, as Craig offered, um, being able to, with, um, for reasonable reasons, have an event maybe postponed. I think that that's a reasonable expectation. Um, and I, I would suggest that as an amendment. Uh, I think, um, could you condense the recommendation? On condition that the residents receive due notice and have the opportunity to ask for an event to be postponed if they have a personal family event. Thank you very much. Can I have a seconder on the friendly amendment? 
Kerry, if that can. Would, would you mind if I raise something there, Mayor and Councillor Abbott? Just a second. Uh, so uh, the friendly amendment has been seconded, Mr. Doherty. So if you'd like to add something, that would be timely now. Sure. I, I just want to uh, say quickly, uh, take on take on board all of that, um, you know, and, and governing for a community is about governing for the majority, not always the major uh, the minority. Uh, within our strata, 70% um, of the strata ownership supports um, this music. I will say that. Um, I, 50% Abbott, is owned by sorry, Craig sorry, Doherty. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I thought, uh, sorry, sorry, I thought I had the floor, pardon me. Um, and Councillor Abbott, I understand that. Uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm fully, and I, I don't, I do not mind notification, but then we, we, we tend to, we're going down a rabbit hole, going back and forth. If I notify and someone says, well, I'm having people out over for dinner at our house that night, where, do, where does it end up and who's ultimately going to be the arbiter here? I don't want to get bogged down in this sort of, um, in this quicksand, in this quicksand of having to go back and forth and who's ultimately going to determine who should be entitled to have an event. Should it be, should it be um, Ms. Shaw? Um, and her partner, or should it be someone further down the building that doesn't even sit above the general store? I, I think notification is fair. And then what the 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 three residential owners and and two of them are down that down the, the southern end of the building. But what what Ms. Shaw and her partner get to do then is if we're holding an event, then they can determine that things accordingly. And there need there does need to be some good faith here. If if there is one of those you know, life-changing moments where they, where they are holding a wake or a wedding uh, celebration or something in their apartment upstairs above the general store, then I would move it. I, do, I, don't, I don't need that drama in my life or in my business life either. But if we set conditions on, on whether we hold events, I can tell you from first-hand experience, and I, and I was the one that offered up that it isn't the most um, uh, harmonious strata on the planet. And I think the comments from Ms. Shaw have probably validated that in the, in, in the ears of all the listeners here, is that will be clumsy, it will be cumbersome, and it doesn't give effect to what we're hoping to achieve, which is to just host, um, you know, once, once every week or two, um, an event to bring people into the store. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Doherty. Uh, Municipal Coordinator, could you refresh everybody with what uh, the amendment is? I, I want to say one more thing. Sorry, Mayor and Council, <clears throat> just this is the last thing I promised to say. The last time we notified people of events too, one of the owners, it wasn't Miss Shaw, but it was another owner in the building. We had somebody playing under the exemption. She came out and she turned around an amplifier out to the car park and turned it up at full blast. So, so there needs to be good faith on both sides. That's the sort of that's the sort of um, the, the, the antics that we deal with. I'm happy to be collaborative and cooperative, but it can't be a over my dead body approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Doherty. Uh, again, Ms. Coordinator, can you refresh us with what is on the table? So, let the motion on floor be amended to add on condition that residents receive due notice and have the opportunity to ask for an event to be postponed if residents are hosting. An event in their home. No, thank you very much, Councillor Abbott. Uh, any change after what you've heard? I, I thought it was special event in their home. Uh, we're making that special event. Uh, special family event was what was said. I think, I think you were thinking but, special family event. Yeah. Um. I. I don't know. Anyone else? <laughs> Well, I have a few other questions. I have a question and a comment, I guess. I'm surprised to hear there's no sound mitigation between the commercial units and the rental units. That's surprising to me. Um, and I wondered, there was a decibel rating quoted. That's not in our bylaws. It is, but we don't have the capacity to take readings. We don't have a decibel reader. And, and the setting of a decibel level in a bylaw is in and of itself a question of reasonability. So ultimately the, the question to be determined is whether or not the noise is reasonable, which is basically how it's handled. Well, 55 and 45 decibels is pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. That's almost hard to hear. Probably our voices. So if, if, I mean, that's, that is our bylaw. If we don't, if we're exceeding these decibels, we can't support that. And that's why. So it'll be a one-time measurement. measurement. In one concert, you take a measurement, you know what it is. 
And then you have to turn it down until it's below that level, because that's what we've agreed to in our bylaw. But uh, Councillor Barmeyer, that is why you see so many applications for noise bylaw exemptions every year. It's because our bylaw is so strict that there are, uh, you know, you can't, pre you pretty much can't have any kind of event. We even have, you know, events in the hall that have to have exemptions to the bylaw. So the exemption is related to the word amplified. That's the exemption that's being sought. The exemption is not to exceed 55 or 45 decibels. Well, they, they, the, the wording of the resolution is to exempt the requirements of the bylaw. So if the requirements of the bylaw prohibit amplification, they also prohibit, prohibit being above a certain decibel level. Um, one we can easily police, the other we can't. I'm struggling with this a bit. Councillor Abbott, we left you on the hook and you've got a breather there for a second. Any suggested changes? I know where you wanted to go. It's, um, I think you were going towards special family events or mm -hmm. occasional family events or something in that. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, it's, it's a reasonability request. I mean, both, both all parties have to be reasonable. I mean, there's no, I don't think we can define them or any, any closer than that. But due notification should definitely be required. Okay. But, uh, Sorry, Carla, one more time on the, uh, what the modification is. On the condition that residents receive due notice and have opportunity to ask for an event to be postponed if residents are hosting a special family event in their home. Are you good with that, Councillor Abbott? That's my uh, best attempt at compromise. So I'm not very good at it. Someone else is good at it. <laughs> There we go. Thank you very much, Councillor Abbott. Um, so I believe, Coordinator, that was the motion that we left before we went to both members of the gallery. Correct. Thank you. Councillors, anything, any other questions? Any modifications? I guess just one question would be amount of events that will be planned. Uh, Mr. Doherty suggested every second weekend. So We've given them some latitude on holidays and Friday. So average two in a month. I think it was described as more as a maximum than an average, to be honest, but I yeah. wouldn't put words in his mouth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Call the motion. All those in favor of the motion that has been amendment, please confirm by saying yes. Those opposed, no. No. Yes. Yes. Councillor Bain. Yeah, mine is a yes to Carried. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next up is a uh, review and approval of the minutes. And the council received the meeting minutes of November the 16th as circulated. I'll put forward that motion. Can I have a second? Thank you. And I have no changes, amendments, additional solutions. Anybody else? Give me one second. There was two sets of minutes, wasn't there? That was the council meeting minutes and then the page nine. The minutes that was present to the past. Um, one question, one, there's a comment on page 13 that I just don't understand even after reading several times. Um, CFO Rook noted that. And there was something about a notational entry for different organization in the CLAC building to capture information. What on earth does that mean? Doesn't translate well, does it? <laughs> so where are you reading? Page, Page 13. Dead center. It said a CFO root noted second bullet down. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, if no one knows what it means, can we just I, I could stop it and make a strike? <laughs> okay. CFO, I'm happy with the strike if you are. The notional entry for different organization in CLAP building to capture information. <laughs> oh, yeah. it was um, when you asked about um, 
the ambulance and oh oh yes it was an allocation of costs we do kind of an internal allocation of costs based on square footage so we allocate costs to right this was on the third quarter review i apologize um we allocate um, the hydro at the end of the year to um, based on square footage to ambulance sar and fire okay well, we can just reword it so it means something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, I used to have another curveball kind of rabbit, or is that your? I'll leave it. It's not passed across the plate there. Okay, good, good one. See if I don't think I've seen you look like Bambi in the headlights like that in a while. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, anything else? Anybody? Take that as the amendment. Uh, yeah. All those. Oh, sorry, I'm a little slow with my mouse. Uh, if we can go up to page um, uh, 12 of 276 under B, Public Works Manager Jaffer noted that uh, information on the engineer for stop signs at the rail crossing. Um, again, I'm, I'm not really sure if on the engineer is supposed to be something different or I'm not sure what this meaning is. Sorry. Top of page 12. Top of page 12. Public Works Manager, Municipal Coordinator. Uh, I think my intent was just to imply that we, that the council would see or hear information about the engineering study at the um, strategy session. So maybe uh, PWM noted that uh, further information regarding an engineering study for the stop sign will be presented at the council meeting or at the strategy session. Which it was. So amended, municipal coordinator. Okay. okay thank you, Councillor Bain. Yeah. Um, there's another one on the bottom. <laughs> On the bottom of the page about CFO noted that the ministry confirmed that green and inclusive community buildings program is intended for uh, lower socioeconomic remote communities with barriers and Lions Bay is not eligible. I'm not sure what these barriers are. We are very picky. It might have been um, social barriers. Social, it's actually social barriers. I think it was social, social and barriers, financial barriers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so amended coordinator. Thank you. Councillor Cunliffe, if you got one with the microscope, are you good? I'm good. Barmer? Good. Barmer, are you good? Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as amended, please confirm by saying yes. Those opposed, no. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Carried. And then special council meeting on uh, 24th. Uh, I'll put forward that they be approved as circulated. Can I have a second? Thank you. And that is on page 23 to start. Any changes, amendments, deletions? Here's to be none. Uh, that being said, then I will call the motion. All those in favor of the minutes as circulate, please confirm by saying yes. Let's vote no. Yes, it is clear. Oh, okay. Pause. Good. No. Oh. Okay, thank you. All those who yes. know, carried, thank you. Business rising from the minutes. I have none. I think we've got a telephone number of stuff here uh, that's going to come back. Being none, moving on, unfinished business, uh, the follow up. So uh, let's, I'll quickly go through the, uh, the rail crossing stop signs that's in process. Public works manager, I know. Yeah, I, um, I'd actually like to make a statement there if I could. Okay. Um, I don't know that I've been uh, entirely clear uh, based on some of the uh, emails that have come back to me. Um, we are required to move the stop signs, period, full stop. Uh, and that's an order by Transport Canada. Our intent is to engage an engineer to review the crossings and intersecting streets to ensure they're safe without a stop sign. So what could, what changes could be made in the absence of a stop sign at the crossings? 
if the engineer finds that a stop sign is required at the crossings, at that point, that information would be provided to Transport Canada and they would make a ruling on the regulations based on that information. So we really don't have a choice with respect to the engineering. We need to have an engineer review, a traffic engineer review that intersection and crossing to make sure it's safe, uh, whether by you know installing stop signs elsewhere or different configurations um, uh, to make it safe. So I hope that's more clear, um, but open to questions if not. Um, yeah, just one question. I, I understood um, we were going to be given a reprieve um, until such time as we have that, that engineer's review. We don't have to remove the sign immediately. Yeah, so my argument to Transport Canada is that removal of the signs creates a safety risk and that we need an engineer to review before we can move forward with their order. Uh, and the response I got was, yes, that's fine. We'll wait for the engineering review. I did specify that um, it was budget dependent and it probably, by the time we engaged and had something back, it probably would be the summer and that was acceptable to them. Okay, okay. there we go. Uh, so the coordinator, this uh, topic is of interest to many. So if you could um, make sure there's lots of details in the, uh, in the minutes for next, thank you. Uh, next piece is um, Lions Bay Walkways. This is a work in progress, I believe, between the works manager and the CAO. Probably we're going to be seeing this again at parking time. If there's no other comment, we'll move on. And uh, Councillor Pavich, I thought we were going to receive these. My, my intention and, and further thought was to reply after this evening's meeting, and I can give them the answer. And there we go. Thank you very much. That's acceptable. Thank you. So those will be a strike for next. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Abbott, yeah. and to the staff. Um, we will do a slight change in the uh, uh, agenda. And I'd like to go to the council portion, uh, which is get my numbers on the right. And so this will be 10C. And uh, this is, uh, I'll call this the urban containment boundary um, discussion. And uh, I think that what I will do is hand this over to Councillor Ravitch uh, to make your motion. Thank you, Woody. That's from page 105, but for some reason we can't get a second. Uh, okay. Um, so before I, I guess I should read the motion first. Um, the Council directs staff to proceed with the regional contract statement amendment request process outlined by Metro Vancouver. Correspondence dated Monday, the backwards, <laughs> 15th of November 2021. And Council directs staff to draft the OCP amendment bylaw reflecting changes to the regional context statements by council, and that upon completion of the public hearing process, subsequent reading of the OCP amendment and changes to the regional context statement, council directs staff to notify Metro Vancouver that the village of Lions Bay seeks to amend its land use designation from general urban to rural to reflect the will of the community based on the results of the November 21st results of the Have Your Say survey and that the urban containment boundary be altered in line with this change. Thank you very much. Councillor Bain, can you second that? I do. Thank you very much. Uh, on the councillor's behalf, any questions, any discussion? Um, I just wonder if it's the last piece is a bit of a presumptuous statement in the sense that the public hearing could sway or change still have to do the public hearing piece. What if the feedback is actually different to the have your say? Different to the have your say. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you know, just, just because that's part part of the public hearing 
process. So I don't know if we need to change that language or just be aware of that to say that. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I guess there is that, that possibility. Um, statistically, it would seem unlikely, but yes. Yeah, no, I, just, um, that's, I think that's you, that my only comment there. Were you thinking of, as this progresses, Councillor Abbott, Abbott publishing this in the update? I mean, there's your communication piece too. Well, I think we have to um, do a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, we've discussed that. There's, there's no way around that. Um, so the wording here says, uh, and subsequent reading of the OCP amendment bylaw, yeah. um, should say bylaw. Um, so that presumes that it's been given third reading after the public hearing. Okay. So you wouldn't give it third reading if the public turned out and said, exactly. you know what, we got it wrong. Okay. Change your minds, whatever. Yeah. So it, it's it's correct as it is. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that. Nice um, the rest of it, there's a little bit of information, but basically it's being discussed. i happy to answer questions. Um, it's often Fred drafted this. Um, and we got some help from uh, from staff, um, doing a bit of how, we, how it's presented. But I, I didn't intend to have the discussion. It's basically my interpretation or our interpretation of what was agreed at the strategy session. As far as I'm concerned, just a question of voting. You know, uh, Councillor Abbott, is it fair to say that you and Councillor Bain uh, have largely got us to this point, but now uh, you're turning to staff to close the deal? Um, my, my thought was, and my suggestion is, that, um, that I've looked at the regional context statement and the OCP. I, I think the changes are fairly simple, to be honest. Um, and I, was, I, I already started to draft what I thought those would look like. I thought we'd share those around council and then pass it off to staff and so we'll, the process. we'll do some busy beaver work and then hand it on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are you fine with that, CAO? Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I trust that, you know, we'll, if we have comment or whatever on what you give us, that yep. we take it into consideration yeah. so, uh, yeah. figure out how you want to... Bounce it around us, we'd send them yeah. to you with all our comments and, yeah. and then take it from there. Yeah, um, um, I'm noticing. Sorry, I, I noticed that, and I I, over, I overlooked it when we put the agenda together. Uh, the materials ought to have included the the report that was in the uh, strategic planning session. But you've all read that, and if anybody wants to refer back to it, that's where it is. Thank you. Um, what it's worth. And just between um, um, the councillors and staff, uh, timing kind of thing? Um, you know, we could probably... And, and recognizing what day in the calendar month we're at, yeah. and who's not here, which is most metro. I don't have the new proposed calendar in front of me, but um, you know, I we can we can shoot for. Um, well, I think it's probably going to take. It's not probably not realistic to to have everything ready for an amendment bylaw, which would require the changes to the RCS uh, by the January eighteenth meeting. I mean, we can try, but. Uh, it may very well be that it would need to be the following meeting, which is probably February 4th or something eighth. like that. February 8th, I think. Is that what it is? Uh, so. Anyways, three weeks mm -hmm. later. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I, as I said, I, I'm, I'm ready to put my suggestions out there. I think the rest of council can do the request and you can have it by Christmas. Okay. Anything I can do to help at Metro, I'm happy to do that too. Uh, there we go. All right. On behalf of the councillors, I will call a motion. All those in favor, please confirm by saying yes. Those opposed, no. Yes. Carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, let's go back to uh, item number 10, uh, which is staff reports, and that is the calendar schedule for 2022. So that will be CAO, this is yours. Yeah, let's see what page is that. 
Oh, it's uh, page 27. Thank you. So, um, based on our uh, experience over the past year, and um, which was a departure from previous years, uh, previously, um, the council meeting schedule was uh, generally first and third Tuesday of each month. Um, and at one point, um, we had actually gone to once a month in the fall of 2019, I believe it was, or 2020, um, which seemed too long. So the, the, the sense was that every two weeks was was too often. Um, it seemed like we were uh, on, a, on a gerbil wheel um, of um, preparing for meetings and, and then doing minutes and not having enough time between meetings to, to do uh, our core work. Um, uh, four weeks was too long uh, between meetings. Uh, three weeks is what we tried for the 2021 year. Um, uh, staff feels that generally this has worked out quite well. Um, very necessary, we've added a special meeting or a, a committee of the whole or council strategy session. Um, this year coming up is a little different because it's a general election year. So uh, we've got uh, that happening on the uh, third Saturday of October is what the legislation requires now. Um, so this, uh, this calendar sets out uh, meetings every three weeks. Uh, we've got uh, an extra uh, session happening on February 15th. Um, that would be a budget committee of the whole um, for the adoption of utilities rate bylaws so that we can get them sent out for the end of the month. Um, and then a special uh, council meeting following that uh, in order to uh, Sorry, that's not right. Um, sorry, a budget committee of the whole and then a special council meeting for the adoption of utilities rate bylaws. Sorry, uh, the note that I'm reading at the bottom here it relates to May 10th. Also a, a special council meeting on May 10th in order to uh, adopt the budget before the legislated deadline of the 15th, which this year is a Sunday, so I don't know how that works, but... Um, <laughs> The uh, CFO's financial calendar is in this agenda as well. So that's been coordinated with the uh, council calendar. Uh, we've got the uh, July meeting as close as possible to the end of July um, to cut down on the length of time between the July meeting and the September meeting, recognizing that um, uh, with the Labor Day falling on September 5th, it's difficult sometimes to get things in tow for September 6th. So that's pushed to the 13th, which lines things up as best we can to uh, get a meeting in just before the election in case there's any business that uh, has to be conducted. Um, this would generally be in an election year, any non-contentious business that has to, uh, it requires a council uh, resolution or could be a grant application or something of that nature. Um, and then after the election, um, the legislation and our bylaw stipulates that the uh, first council meeting of the new council shall take place the first Tuesday of the following month. So first Tuesday of November. So we've got that for the first of November. And generally speaking, that's been uh, more or less a ceremonial event with the uh, uh, judge present normally and um, swearing in of the new council. Um, we posted uh, a regular council meeting the following week to actually uh, conduct some business, catch up on things, because it will have been from October 4th that we would have last had a meeting. Um, and then at the end of the month, we've got uh, strategic planning, um, depending on the makeup of the council, um, potentially orientation as well tied into that. Um, and then Following that, we've got uh, the regular spacing of three weeks to take us to uh, our last meeting of the year in December, prior to the Christmas break. There we go. Uh, let me just get this all out there. 
uh, that the proposed council meeting dates for 2022 set out in the attachment to this report be approved by council. The council considers publication of the meeting schedule in the village update to be reasonably equivalent to that which would be provided by a local newspaper paper publication if it were practicable and that staff published the 2023 <coughs> council meeting schedule in the village update and in accordance with legislative requirements. I'll put that forward. Can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Cunliffe. Any discussion? Yes, I'll go first. Um, anyone else wants to go first? I, um, as I've argued in previous years, I do think the first and third Tuesday, sorry, yeah, first and third Tuesday of every month, it's been a tradition. It allows people to plan things, um, especially people that have to travel. And um, I will certainly be one of those next year, but I'm not asking this special personal concession. I, you know, when, when, when I'm traveling regularly for work, or I'm sure others do, it's nice to be able to plan on a regular cycle and it often happens in a monthly cycle, last week, a month, that kind of thing. I also believe we, you know, we, we've been under some time pressure recently to get through minutes. Um, and if you do end up on a, a project on the East Coast and you're sitting in the council meeting until 12 o'clock at night, it's three o'clock in the morning and first meeting is probably four hours later. Um, just It just doesn't work well zooming in um, to these meetings. And I think we're all hoping to get away from, away from zooming back into the meeting room. So I, I looked at it and in previous years, we've been given more than one option in the meeting room. The first the third cycle, the three week cycle or whatever. I have looked at this and calculated we would add one meeting between now and October. One meeting um, if we went to the first and third. And that's because we have things like, you know, special meeting on the 15th of February, which if that was happened to be the, the regular council meeting, we could break out into the community of the whole, break back into the meeting, do things like that. Um, and if you, you know, and we've proven if you do need a really special short, you know, one topic meeting, those are easy to manage. People don't have to plan their lives. They just have to find an hour or two. So, you know, and, and we have, we seem to have had a lot of those. Um, and probably, and some of them were more than one, sort of one topic. And that's because we couldn't get through all the stuff on the agenda. We ended up having special meetings and discussing several things. So yes, one additional meeting between now and October. It's all it would take to have the first and third Tuesday cycle in this calendar. And that's what I would like to propose. So I will not be voting for the resolution as it's just been um, put forward. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Abbott. So I, I thank you very much for your your thoughts on this. Uh, I, I'm concerned about you and your pending travel or stuff. So the first and the third fits better. First and third weeks sit best with you personally. Is that correct? So I'm not asking for this, so much of a personal exemption. It's also, I mean, I think it's become something of residents. They don't have to look at a calendar. They know when the meetings are. They've got something to bring up. Um, and it's just consistent and easy for all. Another example, myself and Fred have not been able to go to a single ESS meeting since the summer, not one, because every single one clashed with the council meeting because we moved the council meetings, but we didn't ask them to move their meetings. People plan around these cycles. Um, and it's just, I, okay. I, I think, I understand why we're trying to do it, but I think there's create more impact on others and other groups than, than what it actually achieves. Okay, thank you. Uh, CEO, I see you. Um, so with respect to lateness of meeting, um, you know, one of the ways in which we've tried to address that is by having the closed meeting at six o'clock mm -hmm. instead of after, it which I think um, helps so in terms of cutting down on the lateness of meetings. Um, you know, in, in terms of, of people having a sense of when is a council meeting, um, you know, as, as I commented in the report, um, the people, it seems, uh, tend to attend meetings, whether it's in person or now, um, with the benefit of Zoom, attending online, um, 
and more of them attending that way, um, they, they seem to do so when there is something of interest to them on the agenda coming up or um, they wish to speak to a matter or what have you. So they're looking to see when's the next meeting, it's published, they can see when it is. Um, it's not difficult for them to um, establish when, when the next council meeting is and whether or not there's anything that they wish to um, participate in or hear about or um, put forward, anything like that. So it, it is easier and easier for them to do that all the time now, especially with the hybrid form of meetings that we're, we're transitioning into. Um, and so again, it's, it's difficult. We can't, you know, if you have a, a scheduled regular meeting and there's really nothing to be considered, um, it's very difficult to cancel a regular meeting. You can't do it unless you actually attend. Or if you know in advance of the previous meeting that you're not gonna need it, then you can cancel it then, but you have to actually be in a meeting to cancel a meeting. It's much easier to set a new meeting by way of, you know, just you, two counselors can bring a resolution or, or can the mayor or two counselors can, can get together and say, we wanna call a special meeting. It's very simple to set down a special meeting. It's very difficult to cancel a regular meeting. Well, okay. Well, first of all, you don't be one more meeting in, in this calendar. But the way I worked it out, and I can show you that. Um, the other thing is, there are some residents that, if I think back to the, for our first year or whatever, they used to come here and bring up a subject and stand in the gallery, and not a lot of them. But um, I know one in particular. I'm thinking of. He's not on the internet. He's not on. The hasn't got a computer. And he regularly come up here, and that was his opportunity. I don't even know if he receives the village up. You know, you have to go to the post office and look up an address. They are, they are not, not everyone is as computer, um, I wouldn't say literate, but not as literate, as connected as, as all of us are. I, and I, okay. anyway, I think I've made all my points. I think we struck the bolt here. Thank yes. you very much. Um, so uh, we'll go in a slightly different direction. Councillor Bain, uh, any questions, any concerns, any thoughts? And then I'll go to Councillor Barmier and then Councillor Cunlan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in kind of a different situation. Um, being retired and whatnot, I can be quite flexible. Uh, I, I do have sympathies for those that have work schedules and whatnot, and I'm willing to bend um, to their needs on this. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to take a, a minor voice in this argument because it doesn't impact me that much. Um, Council Abbott brings up some pretty legitimate points, and CAO Dijon brings up some interesting points. <laughs> for me, it makes no difference for myself. So I'll, I'll leave the discussion to those that impact it more. Thank you very much, Councillor Bermier. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be flexible on the dates. Um, I think staff has expressed more than once that the two week cycle is not particularly efficient. And we're pushing for some efficiency in a three week gap that provides that. And um, I, I think we should listen to that. Thank you very much. Councillor Kellogg. I can see Councillor Abbott's position and I can appreciate that. Um, and I found that when we went to the four weeks, it seemed that we were having more and more special meetings. I didn't truly appreciate the difficulty in cancelling a meeting. So I kind of at a loss here. Um, but if it would be beneficial to Councillor Abbott, then I would be more than happy to support the two weeks. Actually, Councillor Abbott said it's not beneficial to him and his work stuff. Well, he's concerned about residents who... Well, just to paraphrase one, I didn't say it's not beneficial to me. I said I'm not appealing just on my needs. Okay. I didn't say it's not beneficial, and I think others that plan and have work cycles might also find it beneficial, not just me. Councillor I just ask, do we have to vote on this this evening? Can Councillor Abbott share what he's worked out with staff to have a look at and have it come back and set the first meeting for January? Is that possible? Or um, Well, before I answer that question, I'm just counting the meetings here and I count 17 between now and October 4th, if we do first and third, and I count 12 if we do every okay. three weeks. I'll do, I'll but do then that. plus plus the two special meetings makes 14. So 14 and 17, it's more than difference of one. 
but um, we are. Uh, well, it is only uh, one period. Right? We're not going to have one on the 4th of January. We accept that. So there's only one in January. I could go through each month. I've done it by a month here. We had a meeting. Right. That's why I was wondering. Yeah, we're not, and we're not going to have the first week after after the summer either. So that's that one doesn't count. So it's regular cycle. We don't have the ones on the, one day or one before, before or after the holiday, obviously. A requirement? Uh, the procedure bylaw, I don't have it in front of me, but... Uh, we, could pass, we could do the first meeting for January and come back. I mean, I... <clears throat> I mean, I, I get, let me close with this and, you know, I'll get the sense I me mean, to delay it is, is, is fine. But if it's clear, we're not going in that direction, we're just delaying it. To me, I, I think we're past the point of residents expecting the first and the third. I mean, that's long gone now. And uh, I'm sorry, people don't have computers, but now there's an option to come, you know, live setting it which I just don't see our doors being broken down. So, and I get the issue of the um, economy of staff's time and, and fulfilling what we've done for the last year and the efficiencies. So I would be in favor of the, uh, of the recommendation. Uh, um, you have to post it publicly though. Pardon me? According to the procedure bylaw, you have to post the schedule. Um, Prior to January 31st. Um, January 31st. Okay. January 31st. Okay. So we um, could could resolve it at the first meeting in January. Um, I'm, I'm noticing if we do do first and third, then our July meeting would be July 19th. And then if we don't do the first meeting in September, then our first council meeting after that is September 20th. So there's a there'd be a full two months between meetings, which we'd probably have to put a, a special meeting in there somewhere, probably at the end of July. Um, but in any event, um, one way, if we wanted to uh, parse through this some more and come up with, uh, you know, have a closer look and come back and look at it, um, then if council wants to do that, then, you could agree to have uh, the first meeting in January on the 22nd. Um, you've got a special meeting already scheduled for the 11th, uh, but it's uh, a one-time meeting. Sorry, second one. Second one. Second one. We, it was January kind of 11th. It's not on here, but you just reported out from the close that you're going to do a special meeting on the 11th. Okay. Uh, so no, can we address so this at a special meeting? Pardon me? On the 11th? Can we address the calendar on the 11th? We have a meeting planned for the 18th. Uh, we could, but what, you, what I'm saying is, is you could could also say that uh, you know have a special meeting on the 11th, and then have the first regular meeting of the year on the 18th, and then at that meeting determine what the rest of the calendar year is going to be. Yeah. Because it's got to be posted by the end of January. Yeah. Publicly. True. That's if that gives some time to work a little compromise and. All right. So. Is that, um, so help me out here. Uh, we will um, so not, not use the recommendation that's on the floor. So I would suggest that if, if that's what you'd like to do, is to postpone that um, the decision that's or the request for decision here and the recommendation uh, to the January eighteenth meeting, then maybe uh, the uh, resolution ought to be something like um, that um, council uh, resolves to hold its first meeting of 2022 on January 18th, at which time uh, the calendar, the council calendar for the balance of 2022 shall be considered and determined by council. Something like that. How about I make that the amendment to what's on the floor? Well, you could just postpone what's on the floor to January 18th. 
2022. Yeah, that might be simpler. All right, uh, I, will, so, I will take all in favor of postponing that. Thank you. So, and for clarity, we will be back together on the 11th for the special meeting that uh, we talked about earlier. And the sooner the next set of calendar dates comes along, the better. Okay, thank you very much. Item number indent number two, and it's the I kept putting in infrastructure uh, recommendation that the report I kept green infrastructure environmental quality grant phase three be received for information purposes. I'll put that forward. I have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abbott. And uh, CFO. Yeah, I think this might be a combination of myself and the public works manager. Just as a reminder of sort of the history of this grant, um, we submitted an application in February 2020. It took 17 months to make a decision. That was the longest a grant has ever taken. We found out in July 2021, uh, we were unsuccessful. We subsequently, um, I had a conversation with the um, ICIP EQ lead uh, about our application. We went through it in great detail. Um, as usual, they were oversubscribed. Um, only 18% was funded. Um, this next offering does have, I believe, 270 million available. So hopefully that will increase our chances. The main questions I were asking was about the suitability of our project. Um, we have identified it as one of the more urgent projects we need to do, but there was never any issues with the grant in terms of not being an appropriate project. She just was giving us areas that we could, um, we could attempt to um, improve our application. Some of them will be difficult. For example, the asset management, um, as I think I've mentioned a few times, they're getting stricter and stricter about the asset management and they want, this will be the last grant, this next coming where we don't have to provide evidence that we're actually putting aside money, i.e. budgeting for depreciation. Um, but anyway, the conclusion was that we felt um, supported by um, this person that the Bayview DWIP was the best project to apply for. As well, these um, grants are very time consuming. It will still be a lot of work to go back and update what she suggested we update and prove our answers to meet the January 26 deadline. So we had, um, we're going to suggest that we actually change the um, recommendation as read, but then add that staff bring a grant resolution to the Bayview DWIP project to the January 18th council meeting. So I don't know if the public works manager had anything to add or if we just had some questions for us. Am I gonna add something or not? Public works just, manager, no, can you unmute? You think that... Sorry, no, I didn't have anything to add. Okay. Um, the feedback that you got, Pam, you mentioned, you just mentioned one thing about the asset management. Um, what other feedback did we get that makes us feel confident we have a good shot at this? Um, because, and, and the reason I'm just saying that, if we've got another 17 months <laughs> and we've got those yeah. the drainage problem and those roads deteriorating the way they are, then it's... We're hoping it won't be 17 months. Um, when we look at the guide, because um, they issued actually a new guide for this, um, it was the same guide for phase one and two, there was a new guide for phase three. And they do mention um, it's for projects that they see being done in 2023, which implies they will just take a year. Um, yeah, uh, essentially, um, Councillor Abbott, the, the, um, we were advised that, that the urgency wasn't um, clear in our application. Um, it, it didn't come across that this was a critical project for Alliance Bay. Uh, so that will be the lens that we apply uh, uh, to the new application, just emphasizing the critical nature of uh, the condition of the roads, the condition of the culverts, which are deteriorating. Uh, we've had one collapse of a culvert that we've had to fix. Um, and so those are the types of changes. Yeah. Okay. Just um, she gave us some very good tips. Um, also, we talked about the outcomes. We have to have one outcome, which was the increase the capacity to treat or manage stormwater. But um, we could also increase our argument to increase access to potable water with the fire. Um, yeah. So just hints like that she gave us where there were areas um, within the, the other bullets in the ground. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because it is a good point. It's not as strong as our first one, but 
we just really focused on the stormwater. And she said, uh, the more, because um, it's an outcome, outcome-based analysis that they just, you get marks for every question and every time you can eke out some additional marks. So as um, Nye had said, really push um, how urgent the project is. And so it was actually really good advice, but it was just subtleties like that in each question, ways to um, boost up our asset management that now we've done an additional phase, talk about the fact that we've done phase two of our asset management, because that is worth a lot of marks. And um, yeah, just um, so basically each question will have to be tweaked. Obviously, we have to update the budget. Um, so, but yeah, the general feeling was I, we really, the main thing we wanted to make sure it was there wasn't any flaws in the project itself that made it a weak project and, and there wasn't. She said it was really just the fact they only funded 18%. And what helps us is our, our request isn't huge as well because once they do a couple of big ticket items, there's not a lot of funding left. So that's always been one of our strengths. We've never gone in asking for $20 million. So you do have more of a chance when you, um, when the dollar value is a bit like within our range, she said there was no issue with the amount we were asking for. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure you can sort out the urgency thing with the collapse you had before in a couple of pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was really good advice and I mean, it still be a lot of work, but it, I, I don't think we could start a new grant from scratch. They're, they're just so time consuming. Well, and there's no better project. And there's no better project either, yeah. To me, this is the main reason is not a time issue. That's an advantage, but it's the fact that it's we feel we still feel it's our best project. Is, is the plan to have this re-estimated, or is someone just going to apply escalation to the estimate? No, uh, it's basically going to go back to ISL, who will update the costs based upon their most recent construction projects. That's where the unit cost comes from. So they'll look across their organization for for similar projects and provide the unit costs for that. I mean, we'll, we'll get them in January. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much to uh, CFO Work and Public Works Manager Jaffer. Uh, I think as everybody knows, this is project number one for us. So uh, the sooner we get this out, the sooner we can lobby for it. Okay, uh, motion to receive. Be amended. And, and the amendment was to uh, that staff be directed to prepare the grant application and bring forward the resolution to the to the uh, grant resolution to the January 18th meeting, basically the follow up action, just turn it into a resolution. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Kellner for seconding. Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? Please confirm by saying yes, opposed yes. no. Yes. Good, and let's say good luck to us on this one. Council priorities, which is uh, next in your package, page 33. I see the finance work plan. Sorry, finance work plan is but 33. I'll be quick because it's just been blown out of the water. I so- um, <laughs> You know how the council is with calendars. <laughs> I will just bring a revised one back um, to the 18th because, yeah, I worked in conjunction. I mean, I realized it wasn't debt, but I had to work with something and I worked with the three-week calendar. So I will have to go back and redo it. Um, recognizing even when we have the two-week schedule, we still generally have to have at least one special meeting, but it's really quick. We usually need one to adopt the tax rate bylaw, but I think we've had to do that almost every year since I've been here and it's like a 10 minute meeting. So I will just revise this and bring it back to the meeting. Then there'll be no more questions, I'm sure. Okay, we'll see this again then. Thank you very much. So we'll just leave that as it is. Uh, now on to council priorities, uh, which is on page 39. And the motion is that this information will be received. I'll put that forward. Can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Barman. Any discussion, CAO? Um, so, uh, basically tried to summarize uh, what um, I see as the, the primary um, projects and work that, um, that we've got on our plate uh, that's going to occupy our time over and above, uh, that I would see occupying our time over and above the um, core work that we have that occupies about 90% of our time. Um, 
in the in the short time frame that we have before the end of council's term. A um, couple of these things are noted as subject to budget, of course, um, but these are all sort of the the ones that were on the um, uh, immediate time frame at the strategic planning sessions. Um, I think they're all uh, in that category. Um, and my suggestion would be that, you know, these are all things that we need to um, keep pushing forward, um, not letting any of them fall off the table and make progress on them. Um, and I just, I question the, the, the efficacy of, of choosing a top five or a top 10 um, in the circumstances with the time that we've got left and, and what's already on our plate uh, with initiatives that we've got to um, push forward, um, but certainly open to council's direction on this. Why don't I begin with uh, Councillor Bain, and then we'll go to Councillor Cunliffe, then Councillor Barmere, and Councillor Abbott, and then myself. Um, not too much to say. Um, I, I agree with the priorities that uh, the CFO uh, CAO is uh, referring to. It. Um, the time frame squidge and so many things that need doing, I think the most urgent ones will naturally find the surface. Um, one thing I, I, though I was reading, while reading through this piece um, on page, on the first page of this one, uh, is the second to last bullet point, replacing the SCADA system subject to budget. Um, I'm a little unclear. Are we talking about replacing it uh, with another system or I thought we were just gonna upgrade it. Am I mistaken there? Yeah, Councillor Bain, uh, basically we need to uh, replace all the internal components uh, of the system with more modern components. Uh, so it's essentially a complete replacement. It will still be SCADA. It'll still provide the same information it does uh, with more, uh, a little more functionality uh, and it'll be easier to use for operators. Um, most likely we'll be going to a system that's uh, web enabled. So we won't have to um, use special applications to log into it. Oh, okay, thanks. That's, um, that's all I've got for it right now. Okay, Councilor Kelly. Yeah, I don't have too much to say. I like to see that the uh, recycled beats onboarding there. So if there any update on where we are at with that? And no, our... Count, Councillor Cunliffe, uh, it won't be until the new year uh, that we get together with Waste Control and begin uh, drafting our transition plan. All right, keep me apprised because I'm keen to get that little transfer station going. Absolutely. And um, yeah, that's really, I think we've got it. You do got it laid out as best we can. Thank you very much, Councillor Premier. Yeah, it looks reasonable. Good, Councillor Abbott. Um, my concern is not picking up, picking out a top 10 or somehow creating some sort of prioritization of these. Um, I mean, it seems like a long list. So I, I do think some of them need to be priorities. I mean, are we, not, are we confident we're going to get through all of this? I don't think that's the suggestion, or is it? Uh, no, I mean, some of these will not be finished within Council's remainder of term. Okay, and they're not ranked in a in no, sequence no, I of just priorities. By the categories. Yeah. So that's, that's a little bit of a concern if we don't, I think we should try somehow agree to the priorities, but I mean, I'm not saying we have to necessarily do it tonight or pick a top 10. We wouldn't do it go about it a different way, but I think, you know, we should come back to the next meeting with, I don't know, some sort of status update where we're at and which start to forecast which ones are going to fall off the radar, um, if any. Um, the one that jumps out at me um, is, of course, going to be the emergency planning on emergency program, um, and I'm concerned it's referred to as needs a tweak. I, I personally think it needs more than a tweak, um, but I would li wouldn't like to see that one. I mean, that's you know, bullet number five, 
um, a list of six items on the planning page. Um, I would hope to suggest that that is number one on the list. Um, and global weather is not going to be a friend for any longer, that's for sure. And I think we need to be a far level, far high level of confidence of, of our emergency planning, evacuation planning, and all of that um, than we are at the moment. So that's one. Um, on the on the scale, and I and I just when you were talking and answering Fred's question, I didn't understand that previously. So are you saying that? All the devices, all the instrumentation needs to be replaced. I thought we were just upgrading the programming side of it. No, all the all the components within the SCADA cabinet at the work chart. So not at the treatment plants, not at the PRVs. This is the 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 equipment within the cabinet at the work shard. Okay. Uh, so, so the field so the field devices are still okay. Absolutely, yep. Okay, so it's just a new cabinet, a new PLC, and a new, new program. Uh, yeah, there's several PLCs, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you done, Councillor Amit? Yeah, so I, I don't know if anyone else is feeling on how we go about this kind of prioritization part, but I think that's part of it. Let me take a kick at this because I it's taken me a bit to wrap my head around this, but. Uh, firstly, I like the fact the presentation is condensed and staff wants to do the broad front uh, and push everything all at the same time. I'm thinking, and you know, you mentioned about the emergency services, which I think is also probably, if I'm dear to my heart, the one I'm most interested in, um, given personnel changes and where we're going and uh, council not being able to attend meetings and, and a bunch of stuff. So my recommendation is that um, if there's one or two things that are of concern to a counselor, that it's brought up, let's say now for the first meeting in, in January, that uh, an update is asked for staff and that update moves over to unfinished business so that it's always before us in future agendas, because if it's important that we should be dealing, dealing with it to some form of conclusion. And that should keep our list smallish. And it should, if we're focused on it, should it see, see achievement in whatever we're trying to do, whether it's get new members, different members, different personnel, I'm using the one example. Would that work with you? Sure. Okay. And I think if we kept it to a small ongoing number, I mean, um, okay, we're good. Uh, so I think then we are at, uh, uh, motion to proceed. So I will put that forward. Second, thank you. Any further discussion? Here we go. And uh, CAO, let me be the first to give you the Christmas present. Councillor Abbott would like uh, an update on emergency services for the first meeting in January. Thank you. Uh, next up, and speaking of Councillor Abbott, it is secondary suites. And the recommendation is the council approve the waiving of the secondary suite fee commencing in 22, 2022 for registered suites that are rented to current active volunteer members of the Lions Bay Fire and Rescue. Uh, anything more on this than I've just read out? The uh, CFO's report, not mine. It's a follow-up. <laughs> hand it yeah. over. Yeah, we were... I think it's uh, CFO. We're going to suggest um, an amendment to uh, recommendation adding and that staff... Am I writing? Staff bring the... Um, necessary bylaw amendments to the January 18th meeting for three readings. Again, just kind of bringing forward what was in the follow-up action, but making it part of the resolution. Uh, I will take that as a friendly amendment, and I think I needed a seconder. Thank you, Councilor Bormier. So yeah, just building on, um, it's an attachment, but the November uh, report from Councilor Abbott, 
and the discussions we had in strategic planning, we brought forward this recommendation. Um, there's time for staff to implement this for the utility bills that will go out the end of February. Um, it would just be a fairly minor amendment to the utility bill, just adding another clause for an exemption of the fee and that we would communicate it um, in the utility brochure. And we just have to amend the, um, it's called the secondary suite, um, the secondary suite surcharge bylaw number 513 just has to be amended to include, it lists the exemptions. So we have to add this um, additional ex exemption to the um, bylaw. Other than that, it should be fairly straightforward. And as we've discussed before, in terms of financial considerations, we don't know who the suites are rented out to right now. So we just have to see what the implications would be during the first year in terms of um, fees that are currently being paid that would subsequently be waived. Okay, any questions? Councillor Bain, you good? Good, thank you. Any further questions? Otherwise, I'll call a motion. Motion's called on the friendly amendment before us. Thank you very much. All in favor, yes. Opposed, no. Yes. yes. Thank you, Carrie. Good work on that. And who doesn't love a good parking enforcement summary? Probably the best reading of the weekend. There we go. Um, uh, municipal coordinator, uh, could you send this report to all of council? So they can have it in their little folders for the future. Uh, there we go. So um, this is to be received. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that. What are we getting sent that we haven't got? Well, you may want just just the file, just the one. Oh. You just a report. You don't need the whole agenda. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're we so going to make it easy for you when you could you do it ourselves. But okay, sure. That's great. Thank you. I'm thinking of you. I thought there was something you could get. <laughs> It's crazy over at this end of the table. You should sit here once in a while. There you go. Okay, so uh, so the motion is that this is received. I'll take a second. Thank you. And back to you, Municipal Coordinator. It's a long report, so make it short. Okay. So we can um, start torturing you with questions. So, uh, <laughs> where we could begin with questions. Yeah, I'm open to questions. Okay, let me help you out a bit, bit about this. Uh, firstly, I think other than the information that's presented, and I really like the way it's been presented, uh, that uh, staff is looking for feedback as they think about the parking plan and personnel deployment. So my feedback is uh, yes on reduced fines. I've done the math and I've checked my math with uh, the CFO earlier today that I didn't get my columns mixed up. By doing the amendment at the lower number, I still works in terms of viability where we cover our costs. And so I'm fine with that. Uh, and I think my preference is it's better to use staff time uh, better than to add personnel. So if that assists and it's, you know, first exploration on that, good. The other piece is that um, blank blank and suddenly it'll be parking season again. So my recommendation is that staff get ahead of the season with whatever changes they need to uniform signs and their placement, humps, bumps, and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, so I think that is my piece other than um, a side thing. It's an outstanding report, by the way, municipal coordinator. Uh, that somewhere in the parking plan, which is this is part of, is that for Monday night search and rescue does their practicing, that we can alert the bio officers to let them have the spots uh, behind us here in chambers where many of the park cars. That'd be it. That's it for me. And then we start with Councillor Cunliffe, Councillor Bain, Councillor Abbott, and Councillor Barmere to close. Thank you, Carla. I really don't have much to say. I'm sorry about the increased amount of abuse. <laughs> but uh, I am impressed that, I mean, what people actually paid. We had those that paid their fines, which was always shocking and surprising to me. Um, but considering the amount 
we have a few outspoken individuals that sent letters scolding us about our parking fees. Clearly, there wasn't an issue with the majority of the population and paying them. That would be my take. So here we go. Councillor Bing. Yeah. Um, I've got a bit of a different take on it. Um, speaking of the fees and whatnot, the fines and stuff. I, I look at 2021 as an educational year for visitors to learn that they need to respect the residents if they want to come here. And I, I think the message is now out that uh, you park where you're not supposed to, you'll pay for it. And so the message I think that we've sent to them is adhere to our laws or pay for it or stay away. Um, for those that were shocked by it, they, they didn't do their homework, I guess, and maybe there's some justification for that, but um, I'm cautious to have our our, our uh, fee schedule on a yo-yo where people are more confused all the time. They've had a year to get used to knowing that uh, we take it seriously, that um, residents or residents should be respected. Um, I don't know, that's my take on it, on that part. The other thing, um, if I could go back up, pardon me as I'm scrolling my mouse up. Um, there's a section here about um, what the graph of the um, bylaw notice year to year comparison. And uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that if you take the total number of tickets issued and subtract the, the numbers of the paid and collections, the difference is pretty close to the council's number. Uh, the number, that number is 163 versus 219, which I suspect may be part of the disputed problem. Um, so it didn't seem like um, the response to it is really that bad, other than, as Councilor Cunliffe says, a few unspoken people. But um, um, I'm not unhappy with the work that um, staff have done here at all. Um, I. I, honestly, I don't really see the need for a change on it, but um, I'm not adamant about it. I'll go with the majority, but that's just my point of view. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Abbott. Um, sure. Uh, yeah, a few things. Try to get them. Maybe I'll just talk generally first and I'll flick through some of my notes. Um, can can the bylaw officers do the appeal process or does it have to be is it legislated or that has to be somewhere else? It's in the, um, you appoint a screening officer and ideally it's not the same person who issued the ticket due to perception of conflict. Um, so you could assign another person to do just the disputes, but then you're taking away a resource, which is you're taking the bylaw officer that would be out on the field. Um, so, yeah. So the when when somebody disputes a ticket, um, the screening officer, which is either myself or Carla, mm -hmm. usually goes through Carla first, and then trickier ones or obstinate ones come through to me. Um, and, you know, we look at the situation and determine what we're going to do. And then, you know, if it's, sorry, your appeal or your, your dispute is rejected at this screening level process. And uh, so your options are to pay and we'll honor the, this rate or whatever, pay by that date. Um, if not, then, you know, you, your only option is to take it to adjudication. And that's uh, mm -hmm. through the North Shore Adjudication Facility. For those that um, opted for that this year, um, we then do a report from the screening officer and from the bylaw officer who issued the ticket. And that goes with the package of information, including the ticket, the pictures that go with the ticket, um, those reports describing the circumstances and any interactions that we've had with um, the person, including emails usually that they've sent. Um, and then that package is part of the package that goes to the adjudication center. Yeah, so my, my thoughts are kind of twofold, I guess. Um, one, 
and you know we we increase the number of bio officers on duty create more overlap for those summer kind of rushes um that sometimes happen you know when you've got great weather and um, long weekends or whatever and sometimes don't happen um and you know, but anecdotally and partially talking to the bio office because every time I'm out on the weekend and I see them all stop and say hi. I was wondering if there wasn't, you know, a time when, you know, maybe we didn't need two people, there's not much going on. Can they pick up some of that workload, um, take it away from, from Carlo yourself, that, that screening process, that was one thought. Um, the other thought is, you know, I've always liked this idea of having more bio enforcement and less seasonality. Um, because I think there's other things other than parking that they've, they are doing, they've started to do. And I think that you know, helps in the community in general, um, the other bio enforcement activities they do other than just parking. So kind of that was, I was wondering, and I'm also getting the feeling, once again, you know, I read the report, reading between the lines a little bit maybe, I don't feel there's as much um, sort of antagonistic strife now there's more an acceptance of what they're doing certainly i think um some of the the, the interaction and you know one particular bylaw officer right name is as it seems to have a very easygoing manner and, and i think both the hiking community and the repeated hikers have become more accepted become more accepting of what we're trying to do uh, and i just kind of got a feeling if we could somehow ease the flatten out the workload maybe not have as many peaks and maybe have less seasonality because on a clear, nice, sunny winter's day, we, get a, we still get a lot of hikers coming in. Um, and you know, signs that say no enforcement, no parking, um, I, I think it sends the wrong message. I think we should have a, try have things consistent. You know, come to Lions Bay, regardless of the season, this is what you mean. Maybe it's slightly cheaper in the summer. I don't know. But I think this cycle of only available always in the summer, we, we take the, the bylaws away in the winter. I, I, I feel it could be flat. A sort of more even handed approach all, all through the year um, is one thing I was thinking. Of. And then, uh, you know, what do you do with them if there's not much going on? Um, and, and I thought, yeah, could they be doing other stuff? Could they be doing the screen? So, so that, was, that was the one thought. Um, the other thing that came in here, there was talk about parking stickers again, and there was talk about it in the bio officer's report. Um, wasn't really emphasized, but in discussions I've had with, with the bio guys, there certainly is a feeling of you know, people you know, abusing the stickers. Um, and these stickers that peel off your windscreen, they happen when you take them off and then try to stick them back on. If you don't touch them, they stay there. So that's, that's why that happens. I, <laughs> it's because people take them off and give them to other people. I think that happens. <laughs> um, but the, um, you know, the family members, I think. <clears throat> the, well, the, I, there's been Facebook reports and anecdotally and people, and I, we know of people that have told people so and so does it, give hikers, give hikers parking stickers, um, or, you know, they're available. People outside of the village have got them, how they got them, even the bike boxes we mentioned that. Are you talking about them. guest passes or, or resident passes? Um, both, I believe, resident passes as well, but definitely guest passes. So with respect to the um, adhesiveness of the, those resident permits, that's one of the reasons we're cutting it back from three years to two years is because we found that just they're, they're too old. By the time you're in the third year, yeah, they're falling mm -hmm. off. Uh, with you know several residents came in. I know it's not a popular opinion at this table, but I think it should be permanent on your car. We should go back to the old style. You only get one and stuck in your back window. Um, but maybe that's that's for another discussion at another time. We we take it the car. <laughs> yeah, I've never tried to take it off. <laughs> Feedback time. Um, <laughs> my neighbor just um, the razor blade and popped it off within like thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Um, <laughs> through the chair, if, if I may, just uh, address your your comments about um, about the uh, uh, the seasonality and and the most efficient use of the of the bylaw officers uh, hours. Um, you know, for for the winter, um, it's not that there's no parking; it's that it's free, so people can come and go hiking, and they park in the sunset lot, and chances are it's not going to be over. Flowing or full, 
um, and they can park there for free and go for a hike. Um, I'm so just, you should. Or they can park on, on a mountain and walk from there or park at the schools, they would, or, or what have you. Um, and, but with respect to during the period that the bylaw officers were here, which is a longer period than we've had previously, it was April 1st to October 31st. Um, it, by the end, yeah, they were running out of things to do. Um, but also it wasn't so much that, you know, we had three on at once. That was, you know, we only had three on at once if it was like a holiday Monday or a long weekend and it's sunny or warm or what have you. More often than not, it was a case of, you know, we've got bylaw officer one and two, and they've got their, their set schedule for the week, their two days off, and bylaw officer three is filling in um, for those times when those guys aren't available or they've got an appointment. And at one point, you know, bylaw officer one said, hey, you know what, I, I can't really do this fifth day. How about you take it over for the rest of the season? So that happened. Uh, it just really worked well to have the three of them, and they seemed to really, you know, cover each other well. Uh, you know, we had on weekends, we had, you know, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning and finishing at 10.30, 11 at night. So uh, there was only a, a couple hours over to half, an hour and a half or so, just so that they can, you know, trade notes and inform each other where things are going or if there was a need to have two of them go attend a site together for safety then they'd have an opportunity to do that um and then yeah on the crazy busy weekends if we had three that was great because they were needed and they were all over the place running running themselves ragged but uh, most of the time um you know, there was only one at a time on or a slight overlap. So it was pretty good and efficient use of time. I think that if if we were going to look at changing that at all, stretching it out, I, I think what I would suggest is that we probably maybe start a little bit earlier, maybe March 15th, give them a couple of weeks to get things up and running, give the residents time to go, okay, yeah, I'll go make sure I've got my parking stuff in order. Um, and then and then end it by you know October fifteenth kind of thing after day after uh, Thanksgiving weekend or something like that. I think that there's just there's not enough um, activity beyond that um, heading into the winter. And yeah, I mean it's there are other things that that could be uh, looked at in terms of having them. Um, go out and do other kinds of enforcement, uh, other files that uh, we have difficulty getting to. Um, but um, they're not necessarily things that are top of the priority list, and they're not necessarily things that are causing issues. Um, but I mean, where, where they do, then yeah, we, we do need to, to take action. And um, But it, I, I think it's just be difficult to justify the expense of having a, a year-round bylaw officer, and the, you know, you basically have to have two if you wanted to have somebody around every yeah, day. I think my, my thoughts were more, and I don't know whether it suits any of them to do this. My thoughts were not, not necessarily have year-round seven days a week, or even five days a week, or even four-day week shift. But if there was one of them that you know, didn't mind doing adult days, maybe it was two days a week and it wasn't always the same day or something like that, that we just had sort of cover throughout the year. Um, and if we did have those you know, clear winter days when things get really busy, there is and there's someone to call on. Yeah, it's difficult though as well because each one of those guys had to go and get another job. And, you know, so I get phone calls for references and stuff mm -hmm. um, because they need to be working. And so the difficulty is to try and retain somebody like that who's trained up and available for odd, odd calls or weekends or if the weather's nice and uh, whatnot. So it would be a difficult, a difficult um, sort of shift schedule to try and fill. Okay. Councilor Abbott, different question. Um, Scribble down here. Um, what was I referring to? Was there some more specific questions? Um, 
Oh, this wasn't one what I'm looking for. I was wondering what these parking fees are in January, February, and March. I mean, I understand this is when the fee's paid, I guess, not when it's issued. But how did you get 12 bucks in January and 47 bucks in March? Um, sometimes people just use the meters. Even though they're not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of thought that might be the case. That's amazing. They get Christmas cards too. And, and that's another point oh, where. Sorry, I, sorry, the meters aren't there. So the 12. That would have to be <laughs> someone using the explained it. It was. Um, Had to be late payment. It was um, Plowbird. They did it oh, through Plowbird. Is that disconnected? That won't happen this year. That won't happen this year. Now, if you try to pay on, yeah. on the app, it yeah, says, this. you know, parking. Okay. Uh, Fees are required. Yeah, that was why Only it, from they played A2 Flaubert. April 1st. I thought that was going to be the answer. And I, well, we may have a different discussion, but I, I think we should, we, should take, we should take parking fees year round. Yeah, I was just going to yeah, say. I mean, we have it? no means of enforcing. That's... Well, let, let me go back to my earlier statement. Can we have some sort of enforcement, even if it's not continuous? Um, I mean, you don't have to catch everyone. You, you just have to, be, they have to be aware that it is monitored. Well, I certainly think there's a fair bit of revenue there. And, and I mean, I'm pretty prepared to pay as much for a nice winter hike as I would for a nice summer hike. I don't think it makes any difference to the hikers. Um, the other thing that come into this analysis, there seems to be, if we really, everyone's getting excited about how much revenue it's generating. But there's clearly a lot of soft costs that we're not factoring in, like public works, yard time, signage, all of these things. So I think we need to, before we get too excited about how much money we're making, we should really have a look this at how much- This one is part of this time. It's, the disputes are just taken over. Um, it, yeah. We feel so, it's definitely related to the price. So her time is probably the most. It's I'm, pretty much- yeah, awesome. that, that was, yeah, Sorry, Pam, yeah, yeah, sorry. on that point, because Ron did mention it, and so did, um, so did Fred. I, I, I don't, I, I'm also in approval of tweaking the fines down, but I think it, it's the, the onus one, the one that gets people most upset is I forgot to pay my fine and now I have to pay that. I think I think maybe that part of the penalty might take away a lot of the stress. Uh, we've got no fine, we have to find, but I'm going to cut you a break and still pay the same amount. Just pay it. I think I and Councillor uh, Bain and Abbott's, I mean, I did this because I mean, it's not that hard to do financial modeling, but you know, you, you put yourself in the spot. So I think that's the parking plan. And I guess we're going to see parts of this coming back with the parking plan. After some financial modeling, if we, you know, got 915 uh, paid kind of fines and we reduced it, I'm going to guess we're going to get 10% paid more. Now we got a thousand. I mean, a little bit of modeling would give us a number we're at. The key piece here is that if we're only getting 10% of Carla for the work that we really want her to do for, she says three months of the year, I'm gonna guess it's four months of the year. Well, that's not the most stimulating part of the job. It's a pretty junky duty. And how are we going to attract future personnel to sit in their spot when we say, you know, we want you to sit in concrete for four months while we're doing this. So I think we need to come to a solution there as we noodle this. Back to you, Councillor Abbott, if you could wrap this up. Um, and then I guess yeah, just one other thing when we come to the party plan, Peter, and I did ask the bylaw officers this. On one occasion, all three of them, the mayor was with me, um, on another occasion, one of them. But that piece of um, Bayview below the school, before the bridge, on the way, on the east side, will be widened. It that has no signage, and no, no one seems to know whether it's resident parking or free for all or meant to be paid for. Yeah, we kind of didn't get that project finished um, and, and properly signed. And, and, and the residents, I know some residents that have been sitting behind. People keep asking me that, I had a pocket, I don't know what to tell them. So I think that one we should clean up this year. Yeah. Um, and then by the end of the season, it was, it came, obviously we came known, this was a freebie, right? So that was taken first, mm -hmm. those spots. So the residents didn't get to use them because they were jumped on by the hikers first. They started to realize. Okay, fine, you should I thought there were resident parking permit required for those spots. I thought there was at that end. There's no signage to that effect in hikers were parking there. I know that because I was friendly with straight across the road. And I asked the Bible guys that as well. They said, no, they just they don't do anything about that place because that area because it's not signed. I wouldn't even actually quite sure where it was meant to be. Anyway, that's maybe a spot we can 
Okay. Yeah, it's my observation only. Okay, thank you very much, councillors, for your feedback. And again, we'll see parts of this. I'm going to guess uh, CAO as the parking plan comes out. Or... We'll, we'll be oh. bringing back uh, Councillor Barmier. Oh, sorry, Councillor Barmier. <laughs> You're hiding here uh, behind the seat. No, I'm just to keep looking at these graphs over and over again, and you know, I'm trying to you know find some correlation here. And I don't see a big correlation between uh, other than than our higher fines actually driving our compliance higher. Um, more more tickets are paid the higher our, our fees are and the higher our fines are versus when they're and I guess in 2018 when they were quite low, our compliance was low. So I'm not convinced the fine is really what's dissuading people from paying. It's just we're probably enforcing more and um, issuing more tickets. Um, I don't know that this would change if we change the price. I don't think you're going to see any less disputed tickets. That, that would be my sort of initial read of this data. Um, I don't know how to incentivize people into compliance. Maybe it's simply reducing the early payment fee to a, to a point where it's attractive to just pay it early and get it out of your hair. So you leave everything else the way it is. You know, you, your ticket's a big ticket, but you get a big discount if you pay it early. And if you pay it late, you get hammered even harder. So to incentivize that way would be, um, you know, from my perspective anyways, I, I don't see the actual, uh, ticket cost really. I mean, you look at the graphs and it's, it's, it's the correlations. Because our disputes have really gone up. Yeah, but yeah, just, maybe it's not reflecting in the. In the numbers. Uh, it, it is yeah. a little bit more anecdotal. If I think of the angry letters you get, it seems to be about more often about forgot to pay, now you want to make me pay double. Yeah, it's not the letters, it's the phone costs. Most people well, don't the, write. But it's that the people, big, they're telling us why that, they're not paying. The big jumping penalty seems to be a lot of this yeah. stuff that we, we saw some angry response to. So, so yeah. What, but, what I didn't put in the report is, and I would caution council to, to make comments about people staying away and that kind of thing, because on the one hand, you are saying it is a welcoming community. And on the other hand, you're also saying we support tourism. And the people who are coming here, as you saw by the Google data, they're not repeat, necessarily repeat hikers. They're people who are trying to get out because of COVID and they're they had to follow the health orders. So there are new people who are coming here and they people don't necessarily read bylaws and look at websites to know, anticipate a parking fine that they might get when they get here. So what's happened in the last two years, if you just Google Lions Bay parking, is that now you have over a dozen Reddit threads, basically incentivizing people to coordinate to defy Lions Bay parking regulations. And you can Google it and read it yourself. I didn't want to put it on here because it's a lot of uh, <coughs> and, and bad words. But that message is getting out there on social media um and that's not a good thing so the phone calls that the letters that you see are only a portion of that the phone calls that we get and emails and there's hundreds of basically people saying we're refusing to pay this because this does not make sense it's not rational and yes it looks like there is more compliance um but it's only a small percentage and what we're trying to achieve by lowering the fines is, as you say, Councillor Barmas, people to pay it right off the bat because they're already, the people who don't are already going to get punished by the gradual increase in fines. So those are the people that are already going to get punished regardless of what the cost is. They're going to have to pay double. So that to me is already, uh, you know, a punitive measure that, that, exists in order to capture the people who aren't going to comply in the first place. But the people who made, uh, you know, like an honest mistake or just didn't pay for parking or whatever, um, I don't think personally that they should be slapped with 
such a high fine right away for not understanding parking regulations, which may it do differ from every other metro community. Um, and and so instead of making people angry off the bat, we want them to comply and come back and pay for parking and tell people that. But what's getting out there is the opposite, is that the fines are so high that we're going to defy the rules. Um, so that's not that's not good because you're getting the opposite effect. And and um, yeah, so that's all I have to say about that. Um, you're welcome to Google Lions Bay Parking Reddit threads and read them at your own pleasure. But um, yeah, that's what's I didn't put in. There. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to. I have no patience for people that want to go online and whine about stuff. People, you have to pay for parking. Mm -hmm. We were probably the only metro community that did not have parking fees. So I don't know where. And if you park in the city of White Rock anywhere, like you can't park in their rec center without paying. And if you do not pay, they are ruthless. And they have been for like 20 years. So all we are is now in step. I agree that the big early payout discount is probably a huge incentive, but those people that are on Reddit making threats and they weren't going to pay anyway. Doesn't matter. They that's their mentality. They feel entitled, and somehow because we're this little rural area, they feel that they can come here and treat it however they like. They would not get away with that in Kitsilano. So I just that being said, though they're fines aren't what ours are and I'm still ignoring you know what's on reddit and everything there's still the people who get the tickets and they call and that's the what's not captured it's constant Shauna gets it first we can sometimes spend four or five hours on one dispute because people keep calling we show them the pictures and it's the dollar value they just said you know I know I broke the law I was 20 minutes late getting back from I'm sorry from hiking and now if they didn't pay it right away sometimes they just they don't see it or they don't look at it closely they have a $200 fine and no one in Metro Vancouver has that fine. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about the Reddit stuff. I'm just talking about all of our, uh, her time is taken up in the summer over this. And we do feel there's a definite correlation between the ticket price and people paying. Cause you know, you get a ticket, it's 80 bucks or whatever, I'll pay it. It's $200, I would challenge that. Like it's just, it, it is definitely the value of the ticket that is causing Carla all the work. And it is just, it's really what she does all summer. It's just, and the abuse, but just the phone calls. Like if everyone just even wants to call and talk about it and then pay it, it's still an hour of time. And then the letters we have to send out and going to collections. And I mean, we're just saying as staff, we're just saying that may not came across in the report, but we feel in the time I've been here, there's a definite correlation between the number of disputes and the ticket value. I mean, we have people in tears on the phone saying, I can't afford it. I cannot pay $240. I was just taking my family out. And, you know, a lot of people just genuinely miss the signs. I'm not saying they shouldn't get a ticket, but that, that was the point we were trying to make with just the summer and the increase in the disputes. We just feel that it is definitely proportional to the amount of the fine. CFO, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Municipal Coordinator for an Outstanding Report. Lots of good stuff. So. We are going to see parts of this again in the parking plan and the new year, CAO. Yep. yep. Okay, so between now and then, think about what the right number is. And uh, I think we've got the motion to receive. It's been seconded. Have the discussion. All in favor of receiving the report, please confirm by saying yes, opposed no. Thank you. And again, Municipal Coordinator, wonderful job. Thank you. Next up. Uh, fleet equipment emissions reductions targets, and I'm not going to read the whole recommendation. I'll read the the numbers that council approves and adopts that adopts the four steps toward carbon neutrality proposed by public work staff in the December 14, 2021 report to council titled Public Works Fleet and Equipment Emissions Reductions as follows: Subsection one, subsection two, subsection three, subsection four. And then the second part of the recommendation is that council direct staff and the climate action committee work that the climate action committee work with the Lions Bay Fire and Rescue Department 
to engage in a similar analysis in respect to LBFR's fleet and equipment and return to council in due course with recommendations for council's consideration. So for that motion, Councillor Barnier, can I have a second? Thank you. Any, uh, it's Public Works or the CFO, whichever of you want to speak for a second. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, really quickly, the report pretty much speaks for itself. Um, what we were trying to do is align ourselves with other municipalities. Um, one of the key points that I wanted to highlight is that um, most municipalities have a fleet and equipment replacement program or a policy that sees older equipment replaced on a five to seven year cycle. What this does is this enables them to get newer equipment while still fetching a decent price for their used equipment. The byproduct of this, uh, of a policy or program like this is that it results in more uh, increased efficiency engines being used. Um, so engine improvements improve constantly. Uh, manufacturers are constantly working to tweak uh, for emissions. For example, a tier four engine in a backhoe like we have has 96% less nitrous oxide emitted and 95% less particulate matter uh, emitted when compared to tier one. The village has quite a few pieces of tier one equipment uh, from our Bobcat uh, mini excavator to the loader, uh, chipper and a John Deere mower. Uh, and those are our significant priorities for replacement for us. Um, that's pretty much all I had to say. I'll open it up to questions. Thank you very much. Answers, any questions? No, I, I just want to thank Nye for pulling this together. It's nice to see a commitment from Public Works in this direction. Okay, other councillors? Yeah, if I could, could mention, um, I really appreciate the Public Works um, report uh, that came prior to this that's attached as well. It was a very balanced and realistic um, uh, way forward for uh, uh, improving the uh, emissions of our equipment. Um, this new fuel and everything, uh, I, 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 I agree with the public works manager that uh, if we're gonna go that way, we need to go very cautiously because of the warranties and, and those issues that he highlighted there. Um, uh, to his point about the five-year replacement on vehicles, it's a little different for the fire apparatus. Um, they generally go on a 15-year cycle if or more. So it's going to be a long process to uh, upgrade, although I know one of them is coming up in the next few years, but um, I just don't see any of this thing, this stuff happening in a big hurry, um, because I think we've got to take it uh, in measured steps. Um, um, anyhow, kudos to the Public Works Manager. I appreciate what you've done here. Thanks. Very much, Councillor Bain. And your councillors, Councillor Abbott. Um, yeah, so likewise, appreciate the, the report no, and uh, the commitment and where it's trying to head. Um, of course, always a little disappointed when something that seemed so easy and so obvious <laughs> initially turns out to the devil's in the details as normal. Um, but, a, but a few things come to mind there. So it, this idea of using sustainable like renewable, sorry, renewable diesel. Um, does there come an opportunity when, or does there come a time when we have to have you know, two tanks because half the fleet can use it and half the fleet can't? Um, and what, what does that look like? I'm so thinking, yeah, so uh, it's the trucks uh, right now that are the, the big uh, holdback. Uh, so once they're replaced, um, and I'm thinking maybe seven years, uh, six years. Uh, at that point, we'll face the decision of whether to go with a uh, uh, ICE, internal combustion engine equipment or electric. Uh, there are several very good candidates for electric work trucks um, in the mid to small range that would uh, probably fit half our fleet right now. It's the more heavier duty, the ones that we use for plowing, et cetera, 
Um, and I would think that within the next five to seven years that uh, it, it, technology would progress to the point where maybe electric is the way to go. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, everything is pointing away <coughs> from internal combustion engines, period. Right, and then of course we have the, uh, the hydrogen fuel cell possibility that uh, <laughs> one of us knows a lot about. <laughs> yeah. One of us knows a lot about that some people still believe is going to turn out to be the answer rather than electric, but I think that's more on. Yeah, I and there are currently uh, tests being done, hydrogen equipment powered heavy equipment. Heavy equipment is, is the area of issue um, for most organizations, whether it's construction or agriculture. Um, and hydrogen seems to be quite promising in that area, more so than electrical. Yeah. Uh, so this, this fleet of ours is the leases. Um, so they, they're going to expire in five to seven years? No, we own the trucks. We own the trucks? We own the trucks, yeah. Uh, okay. So the five to seven years is the window we're planning on replacing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's entirely up to council, but it has to be a balance between what we can get trade-in value for our trucks uh, versus what new costs at that point are. Okay. But the five to seven years is from time of purchase. Purchase. Yeah. So we're already three years into three it. Years in. yeah. yeah. So. So it could be sooner. So two to four left. Okay. Um, I had one other four years. Okay, no, I think I think that's probably that's probably fine. That's, Thank you. Uh, Jess, uh, as I said, we appreciate it. Commitment and small steps. And it was uh, always like to run faster. We'll see how that goes. Thank you very Good much. Good luck infrastructure. Come on. Thank you very much. And I think we are all done. Yes. Yeah. All thank all you, Nice. Good kudos from all of us, Public Works Manager. I will call a motion. All those in favor, please confirm yes. Those opposed, no. Yes. Thank you. Gary. Uh, the next piece on our agenda is uh, Mayor's report. I have nothing, uh, which then would go down to subsection D1, which is, oh, perhaps these other councillors. We've already done the uh, urban containment boundary uh, councillors. It's your chance if you want something. That, Not this time. Nothing? Nope. Oh, good. Thanks. Moving down to committees, uh, page one to seven is I think yet another example of three cases of tough work by the Board of Variants. Uh, put forward that to be received. All those in favor, please confirm by saying yes. 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 Councilor Bain, yes. Kerry, thank you. Uh, and then the next one is the strategy session, the lengthy minutes. And I'll put forward uh, to receive those. And I'll thank you, Councilor Cummer, for a second. Any changes, amendments, additions, deletions? So we're not actually approving them now, right? We just received we're receiving them. information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on page 112, there was CFO Rook. I'm catching my sights again. Uh, third bullet Wastewater projects are not considered green grants looking for conservation of water. Is that meant to be wastewater or stormwater? Why are we talking about wastewater? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't, think we, I don't think we were talking about stormwater. No, it's probably it was supposed to be stormwater. Second, uh, public works manager, you're muted. I thought it was. Free. Sorry, what page again? Uh, let me read it to you. 112. Uh, waste, page one twelve. Wastewater projects are not considered green grants looking. Or conservation of water. I think it's potable water. I think it's potable water. We talked about putting micro turbines in the PSVs. Got it. Okay, so it's definitely not wastewater. Okay, potable. Okay. Okay, not buying it. Thank you, Councillor Balmer. I like this turbine idea. I think it needs to be explored. Yeah. Anything else, Councillor Evan? No, I just, I think the point was. I had a, you want to look for conservation. I thought it was a turbine. Exactly. That's what I was waiting for. 
Uh, these, these turbines, were you talking about putting turbines in the, in the potable water, right? Which I guess there's, there's very little flow, I'm not sure what. But what about putting turbines in stormwater pipelines that we're about to create? Um, and I guess yeah. that's seasonal, but that will be a lot of flow. There, there is a, a company that you can Google. It's called Lucent Technologies. Uh, that manufacture inline pipe uh, micro turbines that harness the, the energy uh, stored in pipes um, in, in the water from uh, gravity movement. Um, it's quite interesting work. So there are, there are case studies that show uh, uh, there's benefits to that. However, they're not as... Um, the, the capital costs are quite significant compared to the, the long-term benefits. Mm -hmm. But I see this Bayview Brook project, if it does end up being an underground stormwater pipeline, that's a, that's a significant flow you get on the bottom of that in somewhere. We can definitely look at it. Well, I mean, winter, I mean, to say. <laughs> when it's raining, it rains year, year round anyway. <laughs> Anything else? Um, that's, that's rather... I think I'll finish. All right, uh, Councilor Brain, anything? Nope. You're good. Thank you. All right, uh, motion to receive. All those in favor, please confirm yes. Opposed, no. Thank you. Yes. Next up is emergency services, which is on page 125 of your package. Uh, I'll put forward that motion to receive. Second, thank you, Councillor Abbott. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Any questions, thoughts? No. All motion, all those in favor of receiving, please confirm by saying yes, opposed no. Yes. Okay, now we get into some resolutions. Uh, and of course, it's from, from Lionsway Arts, request for a waiver of the hall, that council waives the hall of rental fees for the Lionsway Arts for the Art Spark winter program, running for one hour from 3.45 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. every Monday between January 10 and February 14. I'll put forward that motion. Thank you, Councillor Bin, for seconding. Any discussion? Don't they do this as an annual granting kind of thing? No, they haven't. And um, I, it's a point I was going to bring up. They are going to for 2022, but those won't be approved until March with the budget. So this was, I spoke to um, Uta Phillips about it. This is a one time one, and then the rest will be captured. So she's back to, she hasn't done a municipal grant for a couple of years, but they're going to start doing one now just for the in kind, for that very efficiency. Okay, no more, no more questions. Call a motion. All in favor, please confirm by saying yes. Opposed, no. Yes. 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 Okay, carried. Uh, next one is a noise bylaw exemption that council grant an exception. The noise bylaw number 283, 1998, to allow for live amplified music at the Village Hall on Sunday, December 26, 2021, between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. for a Boxing Day event put on by Lions Bay Host Concerts. I'll put that forward. Thank you, Councillor Barmer, for seconding. Any questions? If you didn't know what the surprise event was on Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, you do now. No questions. Councillor Bain, you're good? Yep. Thank you. All the motion, all those in favor, please confirm by saying yes. Opposed, no. Yes. Is good carried. And municipal coordinator, a new item, which was the uh, Climate Action Committee for additional members. What's my wording, please? Um, that the terms of reference for the terms of reference, or sorry, yeah. That the terms of reference for the Climate Action Committee be amended to provide for up to seven members at large. <laughs> so I put forward, Councillor Barmere, will you second that? Yep. There you go. 
Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Confirm by saying yes, opposed no. Yes. Yes. yes, done. Good. Next bylaws. Last reading. Uh, the fees bylaw number 497 2016 amendment bylaw number 602 2021 be as amended be adopted. I'll put forward that motion. Councillor Abbott, will you second? Two. Thank you. I actually asked you this one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, any, uh, we've seen this three readings already. So any, any insight from council on this? Okay, none, call a motion. All those in the favor, please confirm by saying yes, opposed no. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Very, which brings us to page 157 of 276. And that is the external and internal correspondence. And what can we say at this time of year? All good things come to an end. And one of those is Councillor Abbott's rotation on correspondence. The last one. Mm. And with, is that a drum roll? <laughs> Councillor Bain is up next. There you go. So I think for this, if I can lead you, Councillor Abbott, so we can scoop through this. If we could treat the uh, general correspondence as consent, if somebody I'm, wants to pull it out. I'm going to decline that offer again, as I normally do. Thank you. I will try to keep it brief. Good. Uh, I'm going to turn my screen around and we'll put the second clock on. <laughs> um, the first one, on the 26, it's uh, past due, unfortunately. Um, another good reason for the meetings every two weeks. Um, the second one from Mr. Uh, Weiler. This is for, um, for a youth program. And I was wondering whether that's not something you might, we might want to put in the village update and see if any of the youth seem fine they are interested in participating. This consistency, consistency youth, youth council. Uh, the deadline's um, passed. Was it? Yeah, the deadline for applications is December 5th. Okay, once again, another reason for meeting in two weeks. Okay. Um, Mr. Hyder, parking tickets. Uh, we said we're going to, I mean, I wasn't planning to respond to that. We said we'd consider these when we were talking about the parking ticket fees and, and have them as part of that discussion. Um, the next three are uh, two from the city of Surrey and one. From Actually, they're all three from the city of Surrey about um, changing land use. Um, they're for information, or we have the opportunity to respond if we wish. Um, the first one is to move some small area of mixed employment to general urban. And uh, if I could accelerate this, this legislation's passed. It has? Yes. And also, uh, that is the January 7th date we told them to respond by. Hey, sneak another one in there. I'll go back and I'm looking at this summary page now, but I remember something about that. This South Campbell Heights Cloverdale Hospital. Oh, okay. Sorry, I apologize then. Huh? Yeah. So I'll just tell you what they are. I'm not suggesting we need to get involved. The next one was a large area, um, South Campbell Heights, as you said. Uh, it's moving um, rural to mixed employment. Um, and then the third one was moving industrial to mixed employment to expand Cloverdale Hospital cancer treatment. So I don't know that there's any of those that we uh, were staking. I thought we'd just let you know what they were. Um, the next one we should just receive is about railway industrial operations um, taxation. We just received that one. The next one. Um, can just receive this program for, for senior, seniors housing program, uh, not housing, um, the New Horizons for seniors program. And I don't, I don't know if there's anything in line the way that we need seniors program here as well established. Uh, uh, City of Coquitlam comments on, on Metro. So City of Coquitlam is objecting to the 2050 plan for two reasons. Um, one, they believe that the 15% affordable housing um, targeting transit corridors is unreasonable and fair on them. And they also object to the 40% tree canopy protection. And um, I thought we'd just make you aware of that. I don't 
know that they're going to have much joy, because I don't know if anyone else is objecting, they're suggesting that the 2050 plan not be adopted and it's postponed to those issues are addressed. Um, uh, BC, SPCA, Redentocide Prohibition. prohibition. Um, it talks about them offering to come out and reassess the situation in lines of the use of Redentocides. Um, I don't know why they say reassess, because I don't know that they've ever been out here done, but they're offering to get involved with communities. I personally think we should go back and take them up on the offer and ask them what they intend to do and what we can do to help. I do think this is an issue. I think it's an issue um, both for pets as well as um, you know, wild birds, um, raptors and stuff that, that, get, that get, get wiped out by these. I think it's a significant issue and we should go back to them. It's my opinion. If, uh, if we don't want to do that so as a council or whatever, um, I could do my personal capacity, I guess, and volunteer it, but we'll hear what others have to think. So if you want to write them a letter, go for it. I think it could be our official position. Uh, I, I think, uh, Nye, what's the program with respect to uh, pest control uh, in places like, for instance, the fire training facility on Brunswick Hill? So it's um, been overrun several times by rats um, uh, and, and we're talking large wood rats the size of a cat. Um, yeah, I, I mean, our, our, the company we use right now uh, does use uh, some rodent rodenticides. Um, we have tried to rodent proof the facilities, um, but basically they, they tear the, um, the mesh down or they eat through the wood to get into the buildings. Um, so it's quite a big problem for us, especially at the fire training compound. Uh, we have had infestations at the works yard as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we need to do some research to look for other alternatives. Um, but right now, uh, we're controlling them uh, with pest detectives uh, program. Well, uh, there's an offer here, I guess, from the BCSPCA. Reach out to them, tell them what you're doing, and see what suggestions they've got. Yeah, I can so, do that for sure. Thank you. Catch and release. And uh, catch and release. Can you uh, um, send Councillor Cunliffe a picture of one of these little beauties? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, Nye. I'll use my imagination. Yeah, well, I, I do have I'll, pictures. That's the tech that's going around those yellow bands with shotguns, but that's okay. Uh, thanks, Nan. I, I would appreciate a report back. It doesn't have to be a council report necessarily on what you find out. Absolutely. Thanks. Um, the next one is Ecom, who are facing challenges and need more money and more staff, and they um, decided to approach Councillor Cunliffe about that. So I'm not sure what action she has, but maybe she should inform us. What she's actually, if I could take it from Councillor Connell, this is a uh, QB that's writing. I know. <laughs> and, uh, I met uh, virtually with uh, the North Van Mayors and the executive for Ecom and Richard Walton, our Ecom representative. Um, discussion was fairly vibrant and plain. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Doug Campbell, the CEO, sent me the slide deck that he did, which I'd like to share. However, he said, I uh, in the way it came to me that I couldn't yet, but I will. It'll give you the story on Ecom, what they're doing from the executive management's perspective. The reality is exactly as the QP members pointed out between Heat Dome's other, uh, other huge events, uh, the place is just swamped. So uh, things are going all over the place in terms of remedies. Clearly more personnel would be the obvious one for the CEO, they can't attract personnel. And then get, get personnel to burnt out. Uh, so it's it's not such an easy fix to throwing money to it. But I will, if by January, have that deck off to the council members and stuff. And you have no idea why they told the council of Why not? I would too. 
I think it went to all the councillors and we just randomly. Uh, we did councillor independently and you used that later. Just randomly picked oh. one. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair Thank enough. you. Um, the next two we can receive, I don't think there's anything else. And then the TransLink one, I um, we look forward to that answer in February and it seems like a positive move there to get the uh, hiker, hiker transit in place. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're working, I think we can do that. And uh, again, Councillor uh, can give me some more ammo, we'll do some more lifting on other service too. Excellent. Well, since we started, the letter sounds very positive and they'll give us an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is about the someone making a connection between pine beetle logging and flooding. Um, you know, those are the interesting environment. Have a read. I'm not sure there's any action we can take. So there are those. Uh, resident correspondence. First up, favorite favorite trailhead and people that like to go on the trails and people's private properties. I would like to support this action to have a porta potty or something up there year round because I do think people are going to still be coming in the, in the winter and the problem hasn't stopped. And but I need to describe the disgusting stories that have been in this email and others. So I would like forward maybe as a budget con consideration. What does it look like having a porta potty there year round, please? Motion. Um, do I need a motion for that? We'll see if a nod of the hips come to the budget. Put it in effect. It might already be in our budget. Uh, yeah, it's already in budget. budget. Okay. A let's, some sort of station, whether that. permanent let's, or... Let's, with Councillor Rabbit's blessing, let's consider that a motion. Okay, if we have a motion, then you'll need to vote in favour. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's considered. Okay. Uh, could, okay. you res, could you respond yeah. to the residents? I will. Um... So, so the next one, um, this is the interpretive sign for the broadleaf maple that uh, was brought up. Um, Nai, are you, are you dialed in on this one? Have you been looking at this? Uh, yeah, I can, I can work with her to create a sign for a uh, broadleaf maple. Thank you. It's rel relatively inexpensive. Okay, thanks. Motion required? No, you'll write her no. too. <laughs> I'm gonna keep, <laughs> if I need a motion, I will, I'll respond to it too. Yeah, if you um, could copy me on it and just connect the two of us. I will do so. Um, second last one, highway noise. I, I, I agree with all these emails. I, I know we've discussed this. I don't know, somehow I just feel we need to play hardball more. That, whether it's that, that so road surfing deteriorates faster than regular road surfing. Surfacing, it doesn't work. I think we had agreement that Modi was going to give us a quiet highway road surfacing through the village, and it's not. It's noisier than the other stuff. And whether it's not cleaning and it's just deteriorating <coughs> or replaced, I think we need to keep pushing this one. Yeah, you see, uh, public works manager, where are we at with this one? I thought we were closed almost, although I get Councillor Rabbit's point. Uh, uh, we need to get back to uh, our Modi contact and uh, try to get uh, uh, a commitment on when things are happening. Thank you very much. Well, why don't we leave it at that, Councillor Abbott, if it's okay with you, I'll ask the, uh, <coughs> the reporter to put this on unfinished business. Yep. I'd like to see this track at the end, so as far as we can go. Thank you. Um, and the last one is uh, Phil Marsh. May I take that one? Certainly. Thank you very much. Uh, I been in some contact with Mr. Marsh. Uh, I wanted to speak with him. That hasn't quite worked out, but um, I have talked to the CFO and I think that a fulsome disclosure is something that staff would like to do. And I think um, it's it's a fair enough issue. Uh, so my proposal, I'll, I'll kind of spill it out before I, I uh, put the motion forward is that uh, I'm, I'm, as some of the councillors are, I'm, we're familiar with this term and we're familiar with uh, Mayor Burr's term. Uh, and, you know, that for most of us is the last, last six years or so. And um, I think 
pretty much other than occasional staff increases and largely um, uh, cost of living increases for uh, our unionized staff. It's, it's a pretty straightforward picture. I'm sure that's what will be presented. I think the issues are the years before, and here's where the motion goes. My recommendation would be that council uh, request staff to do a 10-year compensation review for the Village of Lions Bay from 20, I'll have to CFO 2010 or 2011, 2011. That was, uh, I thought the request was from 2012, is what he said in his 2012. letter. Yeah, the first time we did it, started doing segmented information. Okay, 2012 to uh, in house year to date 2021, uh, highlighting the um, compensation differentiations, differentiations. I rec that's the end of the motion. I'll take a second. Thank you. Uh, then on the discussion, I recognize that there are. Um, there's issues on disclosure of compensation to individuals. There's other stuff that is a bit of a, a minefield that staff is going to have to do where when we went from non-unionized to unionized. I mean, stuff like adding an extra employee, that's an easy one to recognize. So uh, this is gonna take a fair amount of the CFO's time. So it's uh, unlike when I had spoken to Mr. Marsh, I was thinking it's going to be much easier. In fact, it's going to be much harder, uh, but I believe the exercise is worth pursuing. The CFO thinks it's worth pursuing. So um, I put forward the motion and I'll let the councillors weigh in. Other than that, I'll we'll call a motion and we'll ask the CFO to give us an indication when we might see the report, which can then go to the public. Okay. There being no questions. So the question would be... Yep. Oh, sorry, I thought you were asking to see if I have this idea now. No. No? Questions? <coughs> Who's got questions? My, my question was on the time. Oh. Yeah. Um, that's a bit of a tough one. Um, can we maybe aim for the end of February? Fine. I think that, you know, we have to recognize that we're heading into CFO's primary peak work season in terms of the financial calendar. If you have a look at her report, regardless of the fact that it's gonna get updated next meeting, it uh, indicates that the bulk of, of work is, uh, is coming to a peak uh, in the months ahead. So um, I think, I, I don't know if uh, we might be optimistic, but uh, I, mean, I, I think there might be a need to have some latitude. And, and well, if the CFO comes back with a recommendation. Yeah, I, I, I've already started meeting. some work on it. I, I just sort of, I've made a, one make a point about this. I, I think it was a, a comment to the mayor, and I, we were going to bring this up, that um, the mayor and I had discussed, I didn't choose not to do it. We had decided at that point we wouldn't do it. There actually wasn't a resolution for it, so I didn't want to make it sound like I'd been asked to do something and I just didn't get it done. There was, um, there was a discussion that the mayor and I had, because like I said, it hadn't been a resolution that um, we, we would not do it, but I think it is worth doing. Why don't I take a look at it? I have done some work on it, and then I'll know for the next meeting if I can make the February deadline or if I, um, if I need extra time. Good. And we'll look forward to seeing seeing and hearing you on the date. And we'll put that one on the unfinished business. Uh, well, it's going to come through the motions. Now. Yes. Good. Actually, let's just put it on unfinished business. Please, municipal coordinator. Thank you. All right, call a motion. All those in favor, please confirm by saying yes. Those opposed, no. Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, there is no new business. Uh, there are still members of the gallery on. Uh, if you would like, you don't have to um, turn your camera on, but if you'd like to unmute, please come forward. Mr. Reuters, I see you're ready to go. You are on. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'll keep it short and sweet because it's late. Uh, You've taken concrete steps tonight on the matter of the UCB, which serve not only to right a historical wrong, but also put the action, put into action the will of our community. And I appreciate that. Public engagement in our village has been strong and your recognition of that and your willingness to put uh, the thoughtful deliberation of our residents into policy, um, that is an inspiring thing to behold. That kind of relationship between the people and their representatives is the holy grail, as far as I'm concerned, although it's rarely achieved. But you've gone ahead and done it, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who is impressed with what uh, you're accomplishing here. 
So thank you very much for your good work. And uh, thank you particularly to Councillor Abbott for his heavy lifting thus far and to both Councillors Abbott and Bain for tonight's motion or resolution. I'm not sure which it is. Um, I'm sure we're all looking forward to this matter being brought to completion. Thank you again so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Reuters. Anybody else, please unmute. Uh, there being none, uh, we will say thank you to the gallery for attending this evening. And we'll say best of the holiday season for everybody. And we will see you in January 2022. And with that, I will uh, call for a motion of adjournment. Who would like to do that? Thank you, Councillor Cunlin. Councillor Barmere, would you like to second? Yep. All those in favor, yes. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Yes.